Good evening. It's April 16, 2013. Uh, Mrs. Yamakaitis, uh, unfortunately, was involved in an uh, automobile accident and should be with us uh, electronically tonight. Notice of this meeting stating the date, place, and time has been disseminated as required under the Open Publics Meeting Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mr. Colbus. Here. Koziel. Here. Brown. Here. Armstead. Here. Cosby Hurling. Here. Sadowski. Here. Sheehy. Here. Yamakaitis. Here. Medina. Here. Kaczynski. Here. Mr. Moore. Here. Would you all please stand for a flag and prayer and a moment of silence for the tragedy in Boston? God of the universe, look thou with favor upon these here assembled, and bestow thy guidance upon the members of the governing body in their deliberations. This we ask in thy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. In event of emergency, the proper method for exiting in the council chambers through the three doors in the rear of the room. Occupants should proceed down the staircase out the front door, move away from the area of the front steps. Any member of the public wishing to speak during the public comment session at the end of the meeting, please sign in on the white sheets provided in the front of the room. Please turn off all cell phones or place them on silent or vibrate. If you must make a call, leave the council chambers to do so. Uh, Mr. Kirk, uh, did the roll call? Uh, I would like to get a motion for the regular meetings, uh, minutes of the meetings from March 19th, uh, 2013. Motion, please. Council President, I'd like to make a motion for the minutes of March 19th and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colvis. Yes. Koziel. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. All right, we're moving to ordinance on hearings. This is the date and time established for public hearings on ordinance on hearing. Ordinance 5715. Bond ordinance authorizing the resurfacing of various streets and resurfacing of courts at Lawson Park and appropriating $680,000 therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $646,000 in bonds or notes to finance part of the cost thereof. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Have we received any written communication? No, sir. Does anybody in the audience wishes to be heard on the ordinance? Would you step up, please, Ms. Pat Hero? Thanks. Thanks, Roshana. Um, I feel a little bad about saying this because, after all, I had my street beautifully resurfaced several years ago, and I'm still very grateful for that. However, as I understand from reading the newspapers, we are in rather desperate and dire times, so much so that I'm afraid the council people are quite concerned about what they're going to do to cover the massive gap that we have in our budget. And so I'm asking, do we have to do this this year? This is $646,000. If we don't do it this year, maybe postpone it a year, that might save us $646,000. Um, that's all I have to say. Councilman, Councilman Brown. President, Mr. Brown, you want to respond to that? Yes. Um, yes. What, yeah. the, the information you're hearing in the budget, right? The budget crisis, deficit, whatever you want to hear deals with your current fund budget. When we do projects like this, it's coming out of our capital budget. What the city of Linden tries to do is keep our capital budget level. And in addition, again, and I said this, I, um, I guess two months ago when a resident came up, 
is, again, people pay property taxes, yes, for police, fire protection, garbage pickup, um, you know, recreation services, but also for their streets to be paved. Um, and I know a couple of years ago, maybe two years ago, it was decided that every year we're going to do alternating uh, wards. So this year is going to be the first, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth ward streets that are going to be paved. Um, in addition, you have to also remember that because we're bonding this, this cost is going to be out for a couple of years and taking advantage of the low interest rates. You put it off till next year, interest, you have the chance of the interest rates, one, going up, and two, again, neglecting residents who need their streets to be paved as well. You yourself said you had your street paved. I don't see why we're, you know, have other people, they shouldn't be entitled. Some of these streets haven't been paved for, you know, 20, 30 years. I understand that, but even if we put it into the capital budget and bond it out, that still, if you put something on your credit card, for example, if you buy a refrigerator and you can't afford the refrigerator just because you can make like smaller amounts of payments, doesn't mean that you still have, don't have to pay it back. I'm just saying, if we're in that desperate times, maybe we do require, you know, granted it's been 30 years for some people, but still, maybe those people would rather have them have a savings in their pocketbook rather than get their street resurfaced. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Councilman Armstead. As mentioned, uh, Pat, the, um, this is a capital improvement project and it, you know, it's paid over, uh, I think, 20 year period. And what, one of the things that we have as council members is, is a responsibility to make sure that we have some sort of program in place where all the streets are being done consistently. You know, we kind of like go around the city, we, we, we allow engineering to do an assessment for us. And it kind of like keeps the city nice. If you ever notice, you go into other towns, you see a whole, a lot of, the streets look horrible and horrendous. But in London, you drive through the community and you'll see that the, that the streets are pretty, pretty much intact. It's, it's because we've established a program to, to, to uh, keep our streets and our sidewalks maintained so that we have a nice city. So it's, it's um, kind of like a cost of doing business. I mean, if you want to have a nice city, you got to bond these issues and you have to have a very consistent program. Um, can I just ask Ms. Zach, um, how, much is it, how much do we owe for our capital budget? Our debt service annually is $10 million. Each year, each, every two years we go for official bond issues when we know our debt is going to be dropping off. Um, the capital budget this year is a little over three and a half million. Okay, thank you. Mr. Sharpie. Three minutes, please. Mr. Sharpie, uh, 315 second half. Now in this bond, how much of this, in, of this bond, if it was cut in half and you took the playground part of it out, uh, because I see we have the fences up there, like in Larson Park. Could we push back the inner part of the parks? How much would that be taken off? Just keep the street part on, but take the park part of it out. Council President. Mr. Brown. Yeah. I, Larson Park, I mean, I, I think you've come up here before, talked about the condition of Larson Park. Yeah. Um, I see this, is a park, this is a park that both myself and Chris <coughs> share. And if you go on the basketball courts there, they're cracked. There's and grass growing in there. Yes. But, this and so yeah. what happens is that it's cheaper for us to include resurfacing a Larson Park in with our street, you know, resurfacing right. than doing it separately. Look at it from this perspective as well. If someone trips and falls on Larson Park, the liability the city would have right. as well. Um, you know, other parks have been done. And just like Councilman Armstead yeah. stated, again, you know, um, you want our city to be looking nice. And I, I, I didn't say that. Now, how much of that park was damaged are we getting from FEMA? Like the FEMA, yes. went FEMA's down? in Al McDonald, I don't know if you could talk about that, but as far as the playground equipment, that's being. Um, that came under FEMA. Though, that's the tree last tree. month we passed a bond ordinance to um, um, get that playground equipment back. And what's going to happen, the money from FEMA is going to cover the cost of us bonding of that. Uh, in addition to fencing, you know, those are things that Al can talk about. How much is FEMA giving us toward that part? Was it 75% or how much did it give us? Mr. McDonald? As far as the uh, paving is concerned, very little of the, I forget what the number is, 600,000? George, what is it? Less than $50,000 is for the actual court. As far as the playground equipment that was damaged in the, in the uh, storm, 
all of that will be uh, will be eligible for reimbursement. So whatever we spend on that will be eligible to be reimbursed. Now that that is totally separate from that wasn't storm damage. Anyone on my left wishes to make comment reference? Seeing none, I ask for a motion. As the president, I make a motion for the approval of ordinance 57-15 and seek a second. Second. Mr. Colvis. Yes. Koziel. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. 56, 57, 16 was defeated on the introduction. We'll move on to 57, 17. An ordinance to amend and supplement chapter seven, traffic shall be amended as follows. Section 7-33, handicapped parking regulations. 7-33.1A, handicapped parking on street. Add 2507 East Edgar Road, one space. 549 East Blanky Street, one space. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Have we received any written communication? No, sir. Is there anybody in the audience wishes to comment on this ordinance? Motion, please. Council President, I'd like to close the hearing on 5717 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colvis. Yes. Koziel. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Mr. Clerk, 5718. An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 7. Traffic shall be amended as follows. Section 7-12.1, two-hour parking. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Have we received any written communication? No, sir. Does anybody in the audience wish to be heard on this ordinance? Seeing none, I ask for a motion. Council President, I make a motion for the approval of Ordinance 57-18 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colvin. Yes. Koziel. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Uh, 57-19. An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 31 zoning shall be amended as follows. Revise 31-20.26A1 clothing donation bins general requirements. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Have we received any written communication? No, sir. Is anyone in the audience wishes to be heard on the ordinance? Motion, please. Uh, yes, Mr. President, I move the hearing be closed and Ordinance 5719 be adopted and request a second. Second. Mr. Colvis. Yes. Koziel. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Uh, 5720. An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 2. Administration shall be amended as follows. Delete 2-12.1, Department of Police in its entirety. Add new 2-12.1, Department of Police. Amending the table of organization of the police department to consist of one chief, three captains, six lieutenants, 17 sergeants, and 84 patrol officers. The public meeting will be open on this, but the council will continue the matter on to the main meeting. Anybody from the audience wish, to, would you please come up? Before I ask you to speak, Mr. Clerk, has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Have we received any written communication? No, sir. And we have a member of the audience wish to speak on it. Hero, please. I take it that you can answer questions on this because it's not on first reading, even though it is gonna be continued? Okay. Um, 
I'm just wanting to know how come there are, do we need, um, I guess I'm gonna ask Police Chief Schulhafer, do we need so many sergeants? There seem to be 17 sergeants. That seems to be a large amount. How do we base how much we need a sergeant for? There's, there's a few extra sergeants in this table of organization to make up for uh, positions that are being vacated by captains and lieutenants. Okay, so they're being pushed down, and as they're being pushed down, they'll be sergeants, correct? That's right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, motion? Hmm. Council President, I make a motion to table ordinance 57 dash 20 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colbus. Yes. Koziel. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Stain. Mr. Moore. Yes. 5721. Uh. An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 2 administration shall be amended as follows. Delete 2-13.1, creation of department, supervision in its entirety. Add new 2-13.1, creation of department, supervision. Amending the table of organization of the fire department to consist of one chief, five deputy chiefs, 22 fire lieutenants, and 56 firefighters. Thank you. Uh, the public hearing will be open, but the council will continue the matter to the main meeting. Uh, has the ordinance been pop properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Have we received any written communication? No, sir. Is there anyone wishes to be heard on the ordinance from the audience? Would you come up, please? Pat Hero. My remarks will kind of also apply to the last one because I just thought of something. If we're just gonna keep some positions open, we're gonna expand that. Couldn't we like tighten up um, some of the ranks and make those go down into patrol officers just on that one? But the same holds true for number 21. We have 22 fire lieutenants. Is that the case, Chief Rizzo, for um, why we have 22 fire lieutenants or why do we need 22 fire lieutenants? fire lieutenants and the, the, we have fire lieutenants for each company each firefighting company so if you have what this table of organization would fulfill would be four firefighting companies times four shifts which is 22 we have additional covering officers on each shift and that's how we get to our number there. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any further comments, Mr. Sharpie, please? Uh, I'm in agreement with this because we'll be able to keep open all the firehouses. And uh, I'm in total agreement with what the city wants to do with the fire department. It'll be able to keep our houses open, all of them, and we will not have to shut down one. So I'm in agreement with this council on this. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Additional comments from the audience? Please come up, sir. Gentlemen. Good evening, uh, Bill Hasco, President of Fire Officers, FMBA Local 234. Um, Christopher Lukenda here, President of the Firefighters Local 234. Uh, uh, I just wanted to say, like I, I mentioned back there, but say it publicly and, and here on TV, I just want to, uh, you know, we got up here and spoke last month. This uh, change in table organization uh, reflects a little bit, or not a little bit, but it reflects the financial situation that the city is in uh, going towards the cap. This past month, we were able to uh, work with the city uh, and come to an agreement so we can uh, avert going to this table organization. Uh, I'd have to uh, disagree with you here, Mr. Sharpie, that this TFO would definitely close a firehouse, just, just so you know. So um, 
We were able to, uh, does the public know, this past month come to an agreement. Uh, the FMBA and, and the people we represent worked very hard with the city. I, I want to thank uh, the council, uh, particularly uh, Fire Committee Chairman Adam Kaczynski, definitely the mayor, um, Alexa Zak, uh, Labor Relations Specialist Alan Roth did an excellent job. <laughs> Alan, excellent job. And Chief, Chief Rizzo, of course, it was a team effort. Um, we, we understand the situation the city's in and the agreement we've come to, uh, I think, believes, satisfies both. Like I said, we're, it's a family, we're in this together, and um, which I failed to mention back there, most importantly, what this does, this agreement, is it maintains the level of service uh, that we have today in the fire department, which is four firehouses opened and uh, providing a couple ambulances to, to the citizens of Linden. And if this TFO was to go through, there's no doubt it would be closing at least one firehouse, possibly two. And um, the, the service that we provide uh, definitely would be uh, challenged in regards to responding to emergencies and mitigating them. And um, I just wanted to say, again, thank you for, uh, for your support and working together on this. And while I have the mic, Michelle, I'm sure you're listening. I was unaware you were injured. I'm not sure the state of your injuries, but I, I wish you well. Hope you do better soon. Thanks, uh, Christopher Lucenda, Garfield Street, Linden, president of Linden Firefighters. I just want to reiterate what my captain, Bill Hasco, said. You know, it was a, it was a tough situation, a tough, uh, grueling six weeks between the mayor and everybody else involved. Uh, I'm glad we came to uh, a, a somewhat reasonable accord with this for this year. I mean, next year is another year. Uh, I don't look forward to that. Uh, I'm sure you're not going to look forward to it. I'm sure Mr. Roth is definitely not going to look forward to it. But um, we'll, we'll find some way to get through it. You cannot cut emergency services, and I, I say that all the time. Last, yesterday was a perfect example of, you know, when nothing, things like this are, are going to happen, you just don't know when or where. So again, I won't go into the specific, like what Bill said, but thank you for your cooperation. My members, thank you. Chief, Mayor, thank you. Thank you very much for your input. Sir? <coughs> Please state your name and address. My name is Frank Morrow. I was a former member of the ABC Board City of Linden. I have a son who was, was a police officer, Scott, in Birmingham, Alabama. He's now a lawyer representing public safety. I talked to him about the budget that was on uh, TV Sunday, about the police and fire. And Monday, I couldn't sleep all night, thinking what was happening in the city here. We need more police and firemen nowadays. We can do without other things, but police and firemen, we need to have. When Gregorio was the mayor, we didn't have drugs and stuff because we had dogs, drug dogs. He decided to get rid of them because he didn't want to pay for the dog's food. So we got rid of the drug dogs. Now we got drugs and burglaries and what's going on in the city. I was a member of the ABC board for 14 years. I went to conventions, meetings, on private investigations with some of the detectives for the ABC board. I didn't accept a nickel. In 14 years, I never put in a request for any return, a monetary gain or anything. We have to have people in this city to give up things like boards, council members, uh, garbage. There ain't no way we have to pay $25 a month for garbage. That was in the paper. In this paper, we're going to have to pay for garbage and take garbage away. My son was in on a request for aid in Alabama. Grandmother called up her son was giving her a grandson was giving her a hard time. So the police went there, six of them, police officers. One Four minute, of sir. Got killed. They never expected to have a guy come out with an AK-47 and kill him. We got to have more police and more firemen. Thank you. And I appreciate what the council is doing. I had spoke to some of the council people about it. That's all. I Thank you for coming out. Motion, please. 
Sweet. Council President, I make a motion for um, ordinance 57-21 to be tabled and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colvis. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. We're moving uh, to the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be enacted with the one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless the Council member or citizen so request. An event of an item will be removed from the general order of business uh, and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. We have items one through six. Anybody on my right wish to remove anything from the agenda? In the center, one through six. On my left, one through six. Seeing no hands, I'll ask for a motion, please. Uh, yes, Mr. President, I move for uh, items uh, one through six uh, on the consent agenda for approval and request a second. Second. Mr. Colvis. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. <coughs> yes. We move into committee reports. I'll ask Mr. Colibus for his first word report. Thank you, Council President. I have a report from the Engineering Committee. Um, last year, the city applied to the County Community Development Committee to resurface seven streets. This application requested was requested for $275,000 in grants, but only $180,000 was approved. Therefore, the engineering department had to eliminate three streets and reduce the lengths of Bradford Avenue, East Curtis Street, and East 20th Street. A resolution to award the contract is on for tonight. In order to use up the entire grant, the committee will recommend a change order be approved next month to add a second block of Bradford Avenue. Um, any first ward resident with a, qu a question or concern please give me a call at 925-5568. And for the trash pickup, please, the first ward, and Councilman Sheehy will speak more about it, but uh, we will be having one more trash pickup uh, before July 1st. Uh, in the first ward, there's five different districts, so there's five different dates, so please adhere to your normal pickup, whatever date came ne comes next on your schedule, that's going to be the date of the last pickup for 2013. And Councilman Colzio and myself are in the process of organizing a community meeting, and once we finalize the date, we will uh, get out the information. This concludes my report, Council President. Thank you. Uh, Councilman from the second ward, Rich Cozio. Thank you, Council President. As, as Councilman Colibus said, um, there's been a lot of, I'm not going to say misinformation, but but um, scattered information about, uh, about our trash and about our garbage. And we thought it would be prudent to, uh, to, to put a date together and get out and, uh, and, le and let you know um, what's going on, the up-to-date information. And I have to say, as, as, as uh, uh, Chris said, um, Councilman Sheehy will go into this in a little further detail because uh, it's, it's budget time and things are moving and, and, and uh, we're doing things daily trying to keep um, as, as many services and the frequency of our services um, uh, to, the, to the residents. Um, but uh, we, we will set a date up uh, um, to talk about um, services to, to the wards. Uh, Michelle, I wish you and your family um, uh, a quick recovery. I was surprised to hear about that, uh, but I wish you well. And in your absence, I'm going to present the following personnel committee report. Approval is requested uh, for the following personnel actions. In the purchasing division, the approval of a paid FMLA leave of absence for Jessica Slowinski from March 8, 2013 through May 8, 2013. Item two, in the Department of Public Property and Community Service, the approval of an unpaid FMLA leave of absence for Jersey Kowalik from April 1, 2013 through June 1, 2013. And lastly, item three, in the Police Department, uh, the approval of an FMLA unpaid leave of absence for Marilyn Velez from April 1st, 2013 until May 19th, 2013. Uh, I move for approval and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colbus. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. 
Armstead? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Thank you. Um, and one last item, very short tonight. Um, as Councilman Colliver said, um, there is going to be another trash pickup. Um, beyond that, like I said, Councilman uh, Sheehy will, will um, speak to that. But on June 19th, I had, a, I had a neighbor come up and ask me just tonight. On June 19th, 19th, we will have another second ward trash pickup. So please plan accordingly. Um, please utilize, if, if, if you're a regular visitor, you see me there all the time, use the recycling center uh, off of West Elizabeth Avenue uh, to bring metals um, and, and your papers and, and all of those things. But, but all of that is, is, uh, is spelled out on the paperwork that you get from, from uh, Public Works. But again, June 19th, mark your calendar, plan for the date. The second ward will have another trash pickup. Okay, thank you. End of report. Thank you, Councilman. Chairman Brown. Thank you, Council President. Um, approvals requested for the following finance action. The payment of bills totaling $1,428,317.66. The bills have been signed by the mayor, council president, and finance chairman, and a detailed check register and vouchers are on file in the clerk's office. I move for approval and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colbus. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Um, at this time, I would, um, I would like to take this time to introduce the 2013 City of Linden Municipal Budget. The budget represents a total of $99,265,893.90. Uh, uh, for expenses for the year of 2013. The Finance Committee will continue to further reduce expenses where, wherever possible. Uh, the Finance Committee has worked with every department head in keeping ex expenses to a minimum. However, due to the state of New Jersey, a 2% cap levy and a loss in rateables and revenues, the 2013 budget is being introduced this evening over the cap. The budget will become cap compliance once the necessary reductions are made to the appropriations after further concessions are made by the unions and employees. However, the council is working aggressively in reducing all expenses whenever possible, wherever possible. Please be advised that anyone interested in obtaining a copy of the introdu uh, introduced 2013 municipal budget can go to the city of Linden uh, clerk's office from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday. If you are unable to pick up a copy, you may contact the city clerk's office at 908-474 8452 and a copy will be sent to you. I move for approval and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Brown, I have to read. The municipal budget of the City of Linden County of Union for the calendar year 2013 be it resolved that the following statements of revenues and appropriations shall constitute the municipal budget for the year 2013. Be it further resolved that said budget be published in the Union County local source in the issue of June 20th, 2013, the governing body of the City of Linden does hereby introduce the budget, the following as the budget for the year 2013. Notice is hereby given that the budget and tax resolution was introduced by the governing body of the City of Linden County of Union on April 16th, 2013. A hearing on the budget and tax resolution will be held at City Hall on July 16th, 2013 at 7 p.m at which time and place objections to said budget and tax resolution for the year 2013 may be presented by taxpayers or other interested persons. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, motion, please. Council President, I make a motion for the approval um, of the 2013 municipal budget and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colbus. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Okay. Um, I just want to also state um, that 
residents can also get a copy of the municipal budget on the city's website as well. So that should be available by, by tomorrow. Um, so you can get it at home as well. Um, uh, throughout our council reports, numerous council members, including myself, um, will be talking about community meetings that we're gonna have. On my ward, I'm looking at doing it sometime in May. Um, I, I ask residents that if your council person is holding a com community meeting, please attend. Um, the point of these meetings is to um, give residents the opportunity to learn more about the budget, ask questions, be more involved in the process, and especially due to the situation that we're in, I felt it was best that um, we let residents know, you know, what's going on. Um, and, and if they don't have a date today, like myself, we will be posting those dates on TV 36. So um, other than that, end of report. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Armstead. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. President. I have the following reports. The following licenses, permits, and transcripts uh, issued to the city clerk's office during the month of March and fees received have been turned over to the treasurer of the city of Linden. We have 157 birth, death, and marriage transcripts for $2,340. We have 21 marriage civil union licenses for $525, of which uh, $63 goes to the city and $525 uh, goes to the state. Uh, we have seven miscellaneous revenues for $11.52. We have five bingo raffles for $100. We have 255 EDRS vital stats for $3,675. Um, a total of 445 transactions. Uh, city revenue is $6,189.52. The state's revenue is $525 with a grand total of $6,714.52. Also, Mr. President, we have the city clerk's licensing division is submitting this monthly report for the month of March 2013. The office issued 136 miscellaneous licenses and collected $10,444. That's from Joan Turbert. That's a duplicate. I'd also like uh, just to um, speak to the people from my ward with regards to the garbage pickup. Uh, there's been a lot of, um, I would say, rumors and speculation as to what we're doing with our trash pickup. Uh, initially, we had um, decided that we weren't going to have any more trash pickups uh, after last month. Um, but I feel, and many, many on this governing body felt that the um, information wasn't disseminated to the public uh, in a very timely fashion. So um, we decided that we're going to have one more trash pickup. Um, and that will be, the, and the last trash pickup will be in July. Uh, for my ward, the last day will be June the 5th. That's Wednesday, June 5th uh, this year. Uh, it is my hope, my sincere hope, that as, as this governing body continues to convene, that we look forward to, look for, look for ways to uh, continue to trash pick up for the remainder of the year. And I'm hoping and feel pretty confident that we're gonna come up with a way to uh, continue to have the trash pick up for the rest of, of the year. So that being said, um, once again, residents of the fourth ward your last trash pickup will be June the 5th. That's Wednesday, June 5th, unless further, wise, uh, unless further notified. Um, also, um, I'd like to mention that um, we will be uh, scheduling a community meeting to discuss some of the items that um, the other council members uh, talked about, such as the budget and the uh, trash pickup and how we in uh, intend to address it. And that meeting will be scheduled sometime in May also. So uh, we will be properly notifying the residents of the fourth ward. Again, if you're from any ward and you'd like to attend, if you can't attend the third ward meeting and you want to come to my meeting, or if you can't attend the fifth ward meeting or an eighth ward meeting, you want to come to my meeting, feel free. And I would re recommend that anybody from the fourth ward who's unable to attend my meeting, feel free to attend one of the other meetings for the information. That concludes my report. Thank you, Councilman. Fifth Ward Councilwoman, Rashana Cosby Hurley. Thank you, Mr. President. From the Recycling Committee, we had a meeting and you can look forward to seeing new recycling cans, specific for recycling material in all of the parks here in Linden. This is coming out of grant funding. We are also planning to improve the facility that at the recycling center so that the people who work there can be a little bit more comfortable and efficient. 
There's a dark area on North Park Avenue between Elizabeth Avenue and Alberta. I'm going to be requesting a light through the construction code tonight, so hopefully the light will be approved and installed <coughs> soon. It's, it's very dark there, and I reported the three lights also on Park Avenue that are burned out. So if you're coming up Park Avenue to St. George's, it's very dark, so please proceed with caution. We had our budget meeting actually on April the 10th, and I do have the slides that were prepared from our treasurer's office. If you weren't able to attend, I can email them to you, I can drop them off to you, just let me know. My number is 908-477-4120, or you can use the city email. We are having a community meeting Monday, April 29th, and we're gonna focus on prostate cancer screening. This is a grant that is done by the state of New Jersey, so anyone who meets the criteria for the screening, it would be free. If you are found to have prostate cancer, this, you know, and you have no insurance, you would be covered. And we're gonna have um, a young man who was a survivor of prostate cancer. He's gonna be there to talk to the people. If you want any more information about that, you can give me a call. There's a flyer posted in City Hall, upstairs, downstairs, and it's also been sent down an email. So that's gonna be April 29th at 6.30 at the John Street Center. The Charles Street Park, if you've gone by there, you know that we're working on getting the facility back and I would like to ask Mr. McDonald if he can just come up and give a little bit more information about what the plans are for the park. Um, it's a tiny top park and you know he's gonna tell us what stage we're in now and hopefully when we should expect to have the park totally. Mr. Mr. McDonald, can you uh, help us out here? Sure. Um, we're gonna redo the entire park. We're at the grading stage right now, so there's absolutely no equipment in the park right now. It's, uh, it's closed totally at this point. This spring, we're planning on doing the grading work, getting it back in shape, getting some turf grown, and then the equipment will be ordered as soon as the account's in place, and we will have all brand new equipment in there, swings, uh, a composite structure that has uh, several different play apparatuses on it, uh, slides, climbers of that nature, and uh, we're gonna redo the entire place. So it, uh, it should be up and running. We would, I would say by the fall, that's a safe bet by the fall. We'll, we'll need to do this work during the summer months after we get the other playgrounds in shape that are gonna be operating uh, this summer with our park program. So sometime during the uh, summer months, we'll be doing the bulk of the work there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. There was a meeting scheduled today. I know I had mentioned it to several neighbors who were interested in the St. George Avenue area um, project. There's a developer that was interested in a portion that was near the Fred Allen Agency, which is the abandoned property. The meeting was canceled, so as soon as the meeting is rescheduled and I get any information on what they want to put there, I'll be sure to you know let everybody know that. The mayor will mention tonight, though, a program through the state that is free and they're gonna revisit the St. George Avenue redevelopment area for us and see what they can get done. He has all the details and I was very excited because they have deadlines and benchmarks and it's not just gonna be something that we mentioned and you'll never hear about it again. So the mayor will give more information on that. I wanna thank my neighbors on Union Street for their patience, Union and Chandler. We know that there's an underground culvert that was being repaired. It started March 25th. And we were told three weeks, and I want to ask the engineer if he's heard anything because we haven't heard anything. They told us three weeks. I told the neighbors plan for six because it's a project that's being done by an outside vendor. But Mr. Engineer, can you elaborate at all, or we just? Mr. Virtue, no, it's a Union County project. They haven't been uh, communicating with me on that one. Okay, I right, will find out. So just again, thank you for your patience with that everyone in that area. Spring planting of the trees has not begun yet, but all the markings have been done. So we're gonna finish doing Fay Avenue and a couple of other areas. Mrs. Thomas, I did not forget about you. You are on the list. Um, I'm taking areas now for fall planting. If you'd like to have a tree planted, give me a call, send it to me, text it to me, I'll add it to the list. The Shade Tree Commission comes out and what they do is they check to make sure the area can get a tree and if it's a you know, good area, then they're gonna put it for fall planting. But the spring planting is already scheduled and set up for the locations. The replacement of the signs that were faded, 
damaged or whatever continues in our ward. And if you happen to see a sign that's leaning, falling, or whatever, let me know. I do ride around. And, you know, I call them in regularly, but it's just taking a little bit of time. So I just want you to know we're working on it. Tonight, there's a resolution for a bus shelter on uh, St. George Avenue and John Street. It's a really, really busy bus stop that exists there. And I've seen a lot of people sitting on the curb and, you know, just looking weary. So I'm asking for the resolution to be approved tonight. This is the first step for us to get New Jersey Transit to give us a shelter for free. And then we'll get that put in for everyone who travels in that area. It's a very busy bus stop. So this is step one. And lastly, in our ward, we do have multiple districts just like the first ward. So look at your schedule and the bulk pickup is going to take place as scheduled for the next one. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, six Ward Councilman uh, Robert Sadowski. Thank you, uh, Council President. Just a few remarks. First, uh, Michelle, hope you and your family feel better. I'll be giving you a call tomorrow. Um, secondly, uh, just like to mention the tragedy in Boston. I know all the people feel, I don't know how you could say it, but feel for the people there give them our condolences and our prayers. Um, the reason I mention this, maybe I shouldn't, but today, coming home, they're doing sewer work on uh, Woodlawn Avenue, Woodlawn and Liberty. And I get in the house, and it's, well, I checked out, it's the gas company checking on, on a thing. I get in the house, and a resident up the street called up and wanted to know if this was the continuation of all the cities checking for bombs. Uh, I had to tell her, no, this is just an ordinary, you know, whatever it was. But you can tell people are uptight. But uh, anyone else from there, please, all the world, there was the gas company. Okay, thank you. Um, the shop right, <laughs> this, the lawsuit is just about ended. It's going to be given to the judge you know, concerning the um, Duke properties. The judge will have it for about another two or three months before they make any kind of decision. So, ShopRite is still holding up the project. Um, the Southwood project, uh, we will be having meetings concerning that when it gets closer and people will be invited to give their opinions pro or con, but that will be coming up. Um, the city, and the county and uh, Army Corps are still working on the sixth and seventh wards down Emma Place with the flooding. Uh, this takes time, takes money, but I know Jack and myself are working with them. There is progress being made very slowly. So we didn't forget you. Um, okay, with the trash. <laughs> The sixth ward was the first ward that was affected with that last week. First of all, I'd like to apologize to the sixth ward residents concerning the trash pickup. At first, people put it out, I was told to tell them, no trash, bring them in, which I went around telling them. The day before trash pickup, I was informed there will be trash pickup. I went back around and tried to tell as many people called up that there will be trash pickup. Uh, I won't tell you how many phone calls I got on, tr on concerning trash pickup, but <laughs> it was way over 70, 75 calls, all concerning it. Uh, I'm sorry, I apologize for the mix up we had in the sixth ward, but I think eventually it turned out fairly well. People got their trash picked up. So I just want to thank the residents for, uh, uh, I don't know, whatever it is, they with, uh, withstood this, whatever it is. And uh, okay. the other thing is, I've had calls already for the last oh, couple of months about part-time summer work for students. I have a list already that I take. Uh, there will be no part-time work for students. The people on my list, I will give them a call personally and tell them that the city isn't hiring for the summer. Um, and lastly, 
Um, we talked about the budget. Uh, Councilman in the fifth or fourth, third, fourth wards, and myself were on the budget committee. They are the experts, to be truthful. They are both holding meetings, and we would like, we, I talked to them, like anyone from the sixth ward, we will get the dates. If you want to, you can come up to a Peter or Derek's meeting. I will be there with them, and they can explain your questions much better than myself. Um, thank you, and that concludes my talk. Thank you, Councilman. Honorable Councilman from the seventh ward, Jack Shee. Thank you, sir. I'd like to start off with the trash. <coughs> Understood, everyone in this town will get another trash pickup. Everyone, every ward will on your normal schedule. Just check your schedule, normal trash pickup. We will get one more. And it's basically because of the budget. We don't have the money to pay for the disposal of all of, of this trash. So we're working hard, but it's, we just don't have the money to write the check to pay for the disposal fees. And you have to remember something. In the city of Linden, for years, we never paid for disposal fees. We had our own landfill. Now the landfill is costing us millions of dollars a year to keep it closed. It don't make sense, but that's the truth. We're paying millions a year just to keep a landfill closed. I'm gonna repeat it again. For years, we never paid a dime to dump our trash, and now we're in a hole. And you'll see tonight, we're gonna put it out on the floor for, uh, say, a minimum pickup, $10, $20 a month to cover the, our, our expenses. So please, just think about it, and please, politely, give your council people your input on this. We're gonna put it out on the floor, and we, we need the input, but I'm gonna say it again. Remember, for the last 50 years, more than that, 100 years, we dumped for free. And we're not dumping for free anymore. And that this is why it's part of the reason we're in the hole we're in. There's nobody up here wants to charge you a cent for garbage. The whole purpose of living in the city of Linden was getting your trash picked up and your garbage picked up. And the crews we have do an excellent job over it. But Tell you the truth, the party's over. We gotta pay for the trash. I'm sorry, I hate to say it, but you know, living in Linden, I'll say it again, the whole thing was, you didn't pay for your trash pickup, you didn't pay for your garbage pickup, but you know, we gotta cover our expenses, and I'd hate to be the, the bearer of bad news. But we do have a recycling center. So if you have your brush, your newspapers, your cardboard, your TVs, your computers, Bring that to the recycling center. The metal pickup, if you have metals, call the public works and we will make arrangements to get those metals picked up. We're working on the metal situation. Believe you me, tonight, I had two confrontations just in front of my house with people picking up trash. I mean, I'm almost getting into fist fights with these people trying to explain to them you cannot pick up the metals, it's illegal. And the, the police department, you know, to track these people down, it's very hard for them. So if you see someone picking up metals, please don't confront them. Just get their license plate number, description of their vehicle, and just call the police department. Please do, do, do us all that favor. And, uh, you know, I apologize for the inconvenience, but I really hope everybody understands, you know, the, the situation that we're in. Nobody wants to lay off policemen and firemen, nobody. But we just don't have the money. It's just not in the budget. All right, let me move on. Got through that. Uh, this for the seventh ward residents, the light on 12th Street will be repaired. I promise you it will be repaired. This light's been flashing now for three months. We do have the money. What the problem is, is the light is so old that we have to change the whole system at that, at that intersection. And, and it, is, it is a lot of money. And, you know, money is a problem. But uh, we, we need that light just to slow the truck traffic down and the pedestrian traffic in the seventh ward. And like Mr. Sadowski said, we have a major flood problem with Emma Place and the West Brook. Right now, we just hired an engineering company 
the same engineering company that took care of the Westbrook between the highway and St. George Avenue, they're, they're gonna give us a survey, a study on what we need to do to stop the flooding problem on Emma Place and, and, and the Seventh Ward. It, the, these people need relief every time it rains. I mean, forget about Sandy. The storm before that wiped us out too down there. We're, we're getting beat down to the ground uh, down there. We can't take on another storm down there. It, it, it's just too much for these people. They need relief. Okay. On good news, we will be paving East 20th Street. East, East 20th Street has had a flood problem since they put the sewer line uh, through there when uh, we redid the mall. This is what the people in the 7th Ward have to live with. Listen to me and listen up good. When they put that mall in there, the people on East 20th Street have been suffering with a flood problem since then. And we're hopefully this summer we're going to rectify that problem. Now in the 7th Ward, Philip 66 is now going to run 160 trains through our front door every day. Every day of the week, we're going to have 160 trains come through our front door. I believe in buying American oil. And I believe in keeping the United States working, keeping the people in Linden working. But to, 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 to run these trains right through our front door is honestly ridiculous. I'm not even supposed to come out and say this yet, but I, I, I need to bring it to the community where, where the Linden PAL fields are, Memorial Field, they're gonna be staging the trains across from the ball fields. That's not really a big problem. The problem is these 160 trains are gonna cross Lower Road, you know, where our, where, right in front of where our public works garage is and it's gonna hold up the roadway. And this, these trains have to stop at Lower Road. Now you imagine, these trains are only, I'd say within 200 feet of some homes. That train's gonna stop, blow the whistle three times, and then pull a string of, of 160 rail cars. You know what the people of the Seventh Ward put up with? This is what we have to deal with. And I've said it over and over, and now it come back to haunt me, that the Seventh Ward pulls the train for this whole city. This is the stuff we have to live with down there. We have more malls, more restaurants, uh, forget about the refinery, the landfill, and all the gasoline terminals we live with. Now we're gonna have to deal with this. And my people cannot deal with it. Enough's enough already. We need to reroute these trains to, to keep them away from the residents uh, of our ward. It, it, it's ridiculous to even think that you would want to run 160 trains, 120 train cars loaded with oil but by these people's homes. And th this is what we have to live with. On, on another great point, what we deal with in the seventh ward, they're gonna close Lower Road for three to four weeks because they're gonna change the culvert pipe that's right in front of Public Works. They're gonna to need to shut the roadway down for at least three weeks, at least. Because when they get done at Mrs. Cosby's ward, the county, they're gonna come over and, and, and do the job in our ward. And like she said, we're dealing with the county. They say three weeks, I think we better expect five weeks. And then as soon as they're done repairing that culvert pipe, they're gonna repair the railroad tracks right next to it. They can't be done at the same time. So that roadway is gonna be blocked up, you know, for at least a month. Hopefully it'll only take a, a, a month's time uh, to repair that roadway to inconvenience us some more. And I feel the culvert needs to be replaced because of all the truck traffic over the years. The, the truck traffic has uh, damaged that culvert pipe. And on a good note, we're going to be planting trees on Walter Street. So on Walter Street, the citizens need to know it's no longer going to be a parking area for you on Walter Street because we're, we're going to uh, plant those trees and we're going to take away your parking area because you shouldn't park there anyway, really. So 
Well, I got through that, Council President. I appreciate everybody's attention, and thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Councilman She You always do a great job. Uh, Councilwoman Michelle Yamakaitis, uh, would you like to say anything? Uh, yes, I just wanted to mention I will be having a community meeting on Monday, April 22nd at 7 p.m. at the Jersey Lane Bowling Alley. We'll have Mrs. Zach there to do a presentation of the budget. And I'd also like to remind the 8th Ward residents that we will be getting one more trash day, and please check your schedule for the district you're living in. And that concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman, and uh, get better for all of us. Thank you. Councilman Medina. Thank you, Council President. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to rework my report just to start off with the trash because it is a hot topic. So I, <laughs> so I figure I'll get it out there for everyone for the Ninth Ward. Our last bulk trash collection for the Ninth Ward is on Wednesday, April 24th. And for those residents on, in the Ninth Ward on the Witt Terrace facing towards Myrtle, Myrtle or Stout Street, they're scheduled for May 1st as per the Tenth Ward uh, collection schedule. That's the way they separate the district. I don't know why, but just please make sure to check your collection schedule. Make sure it falls on either one of those two days. So we, we, don't, we definitely don't want to miss you. So definitely get your stuff out. Also, uh, for the Ninth Ward residents, we are introducing on first reading an ordinance for overnight parking on the side streets along Northwood Avenue. Um, this ordinance will help reduce some of the issues the residents are dealing with, such as patrons from Central Park and the overflow from, for uh, residents from Roselle. So uh, it is on the agenda for first reading and look forward to uh, uh, you know, we're moving that forward to help improve the quality of life for our, our residents there. Lastly, the weather is getting warmer and that equals children out playing, people jogging, and enjoying the great weather. So with that in mind, please drive safely Drive at the posted speed limit. Again, DeWitt, Orchard, and Summit are roads that surround schools and parks. It is crucial that we, we all drive safely, report any erratic driving, follow local traffic laws, and most importantly, keep our children safe. Again, we are plagued with traffic issues, but I am confident as a community and working with our police department, we can help reduce the numbers of violators, accidents, and overall improve our quality of life for the folks in the Ninth Ward. Thank you, and that concludes my report, Council President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Kaczynski. Thank you, Mr. Council President. From the Construction Code and Lighting Committee, the Construction Office issued up 223 permits and 83 certificates for the month of March and collected $44,082 in fees. And also, as uh, Councilwoman Cosby Hurling uh, mentioned earlier, the committee received a request from her for a street light to be placed on Park Avenue between Fay and Alberta Avenue. City Engineer Virchik also found it very dark in that area and stated that PSENG recommends a 250 watt light mid block. The additional cost to the city would be $21.97 uh, $21 per month. The committee uh, had no issue with the request and as such, I move this motion and seek a second. Second. Mr. Calvis. Yes. Koziel. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yemkaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Thank you. From the fire committee, I'd just like to say uh, and recognize the hard work on both sides that's been going on, uh, both the city and the fire uh, side. And uh, I genuinely want to express my sincere thanks to everyone for working hard uh, on this situation. May 1st, as Councilman Medina said, for some of his residents, that's the majority of our residents in the 10th Ward last pickup day for bulk trash, May 1st. But please, just in case, if you live in the 10th Ward, you know we have curvy streets and windy streets, and he gets half a block, I get half a block. It's weird. So check your schedule to make sure. But the majority, uh, May 1st, will be your last pickup for your, your bulk trash. Finally, uh, I received some concerns about speeding on North Stiles Street, and I've been kind of camped out there by Winfield Park, uh, the, the Haven Place, uh, Willick Road, Stockton Road, that area. And it is a speedway. I mean, it's always been a speedway, especially from the parkway entrances. If you come around the way where it goes two lanes into one, you can always see a Winfield Park cop there pulling somebody over because somebody's speeding. And that's kind of the weird situation it's in because there's so many 
uh, entities involved. You have Cranford, Winfield Park, it's a county road, and then Linden as well. Uh, I, I plan on sitting down with uh, the mayor and different police entities to see what we can do from a Linden point of view, uh, considering that relatively unique situation, to see how we can better prevent these uh, high speeds coming down that road. Uh, you know, because I've also been walking and keeping track of how many times that pedestrian crosswalk law is violated when I almost get hit each time. Uh, and it seems like it's one, two, three, four, then the fifth car will stop for me. So I don't know if it's information or what it is, enforcement. We'll see, but I'm gonna sit down and try to um, work a plan that won't be a Band-Aid solution, more of a long-term solution. And of course, long-term solutions take a little groundwork and a little, little grassroots efforts, but I think it'll be well worth it in the long run. Uh, and Councilman Medina and myself are planning also on holding a uh, budget hearing uh, for the residents of Sunnyside, 9th and 10th wards. We're working on a location, that's kind of our hang up, but uh, we're hoping to get something in place uh, by the first week of May, and we will definitely flyer the area, and there will also be the different electronic means that you can see uh, for any kind of updates on when that meeting might be. But we're looking for the first week in May. That's for all 9th, 10th wards, and anybody that's interested can swing on by too. Once we get a place finalized, we'll let everybody know. If anybody has any concerns, 908-463-9234. Uh, leave a message, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Or email me, if you email me, I'll probably get back to you a little quicker. A. Kaczynski, my last name, uh, at linden-nj.org. Uh, thank you, Mr. Council President, that includes my report. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Mayor Gabunga? Thank you, Council President. First off, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Fire President Lukenda from the FMBA, and also the Superior Officer President Bill Hasco for working with the city of Linden uh, to resolve their numbers so that we could keep the present complement in our fire department. It was a lot of hard work. It was a lot of effort on your part. And also the fire the men who approved the concession so that we wouldn't, wouldn't have to lay off firemen. You guys took the lead and it's appreciated. And just thank all your membership on behalf of City Council and myself for the hard work you put in and the love for this city that you've shown. I thank you again. And I just want to let everybody else also know that other unions are working closely with the City of Linden. Councilman Brown, our CFO, our Labor Attorney, myself, and other councilmen to try to resolve their issues so that they could make a number that will stop us from either having furloughs or for laying off also. Uh, we do have a severe budget deficit. Everybody realizes it. Uh, the only way to get out of it is that we all work together as one big family and move forward after we dig ourselves out of this hole. And that is exactly what's gonna happen because I am cautiously optimistic, just as the fire department worked with us, we have the police department working with us, we have public works working with us, we have white collar and clerical working with unions working with us also. And, and we're gonna dig ourselves out of this hole and come 2014, there's gonna be reoccurring revenues. We won't be totally out of the woods, but we'll have reoccurring revenues just one in particular is two and a half million dollars starting in February of 2014, which we're going to get, be getting from Spectra Energy uh, because of the new 42-inch natural gas pipeline that they're putting put in to Linden from the pumping station underneath the turnpike, underneath the Arthur Kill into Manhattan. Again, two and a half million dollars in reoccurring revenues. So we are facing this problem, when I say we, it's myself and the governing body are facing this problem head on and we are gonna resolve it. And in 2014 and 15, we will be better off for it. Uh, also, I'd like to mention that, although the other council persons have mentioned about trash pickup, July 11th will be the last trash pickup. If you Look at your current schedule, anything before July 11th, you will have a trash day. Also, you will be getting a letter probably mid next week describing the entire situation with trash. 
you will be able to br still continue brush pickup, brush and yard debris using your old trash schedule after July 11th, but that's only brush and yard debris. Any metals, as was stated before, make an appointment with Public Works, we will pick it up, or Public Works will pick it up at a convenient time for you and Public Works. Uh, in regards to our recycling center, you could bring used motor oil there. You could bring leaves and grass in season. You could bring metal there. You could bring refrigerators or washers, dryers, if you have the means to get it there, there. You could bring your coal mingled there. So you could bring all your papers there. It's in the, behind the ambulance building off of West Elizabeth Avenue where the old ice house used to be. Again, it's a convenient place. I go there every Saturday. It's easier for me to go there and drop off all my recyclables rather than put it at the curb on Monday. So just please consider that uh, in, in these times that we're, we're asking for your help uh, to help us as we get through this budget deficit. Also, I'm gonna be advising the police department, in particular our parking meter individuals to start issuing on Wood Avenue two-hour parking violations at the meters. What's happening is, and I don't understand the logic, but many of the business merchants and their employees are feeding the meters and taking up parking spots which should be open for their customers. Again, I don't understand their logic, but they feed the meters and all day long they park their current car in front of the stores. And again, that's disruptive to the customers and it don't make any business sense. So we're giving them a letter and next week we're gonna start strictly enforcing it. So if you see, see parking enforcement officers with a stick and chalk on it, they're gonna be marking the tires for two hours and then issuing summonses. Our Superstorm Sandy Relief Fund is aggressively interviewing individuals that had severe damage to their homes from Superstorm Sandy. We don't have a ton of money, but we've received monies from New Star, from Philip 66, from private individuals, from Kiwanis Fundraiser, and we have some money to give them a little boost uh, for the damages they sustained in Superstorm Sandy. And the committee is meeting and interviewing people and handing out cash checks to them based on the severity of their damages to their home. And I will, in the near future, publicly thank all the committee members who every week are giving up their time to be able to assist uh, their family members of Linden uh, with the dilemma that they've had due to Superstorm Sandy. As Councilwoman in the Fifth Ward stated, the Department of Community Affairs is going to be doing a planning, site plan, scope of services for East St. George's Avenue between Popeyes and Baltimore Avenue on St. George, East St. George's Avenue. Myself and Ron Stefanowitz, the LEDC director, met with DCA Commissioner Constable in Trenton, and this local planning team is going to provide a service to the city of Linden free of charge to decide on how best we could develop that two square block area on East St. George Avenue having a public and private partnership in those two blocks. They're gonna consult with private and public, local, regional, and state agencies that could be of assistance in the development of St. George Avenue Community Service Center. Again, if we have a development, we're gonna to try to get state agencies as part of that development uh, to, to occupy some of those buildings. We're also going to try to get Union County 
to occupy some of those buildings with social services. And of course, my dream, although it's gonna be expensive, but hopefully it could happen, is relocate our police department there with a justice center where we have a constant patrol, police officers coming and going because of the police department, and also uh, have a court system there, which would give an economic shot in the arm to that neighborhood and, and encourage further business. So this is, as, as Councilwoman Roshana Cosby Hurling stated, a, a, a project that has specific timetables where at the end of the year they're gonna be finished and by mid-February or early March, they're gonna give us a recommendation as to how to proceed with proper development on East St. George's Avenue. I'm excited about it. I, I think it's something that uh, is gonna prove very interesting. Again, a public-private partnership uh, is gonna be something that uh, is unique and, and doable versus just a public uh, partnership that's gonna cost us a lot of money. So I'd like to, again, uh, thank the residents for having the understanding that we are in serious deficit with our budget and just bear with us. We're working hard, every council person and all our department heads are working extremely hard and we're gonna get out of this hole and Linden and the residents are gonna be better off for it. Thank you, council president and the report. Thank you, Mayor. We're going to move into resolutions 2013-163 through uh, 62 through 2013-192. Public comment would be permitted on our specific resolutions to be removed from the consent approval. Please read the synopsis of the resolutions which have been prepared by the city clerk's office. Each is informative and self-explanatory. However, if you wish to address a specific resolution, the council will entertain questions on it. I'm going to ask Mr. Brown to uh, address number. Council President, I look um, to remove resolution 2013-190, uh, and I ask for a second. 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 Mr. Colbert. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Stain. Mr. Moore? Yes. Uh, now we'll move on to the remainder. Uh, people on my right wish to, uh, Pat Hero, would you? 182? 186? 187? 191. This is, uh, yes. 173, 185. Gentlemen, uh, yes. 166. 178. 180. 184. 186. 188. Anybody else on my right? In the center? And on my left. Yes, sir? 177. 177. Motion for the remainder, please. Council President, I move resolutions 162 through 192 with the following exceptions. 166, 178, 182, 186, 187, 191, 180, 184, 173, 177, 185, 188. I request a second. Second. Mr. Colbus. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes, but abstain on 191. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Uh, I'd like to start with 2013-191. Uh, Pat Hero, please. All right, until we can find her. Uh, Mr. Moore. 
Mrs. Malik Wood. Mrs. Malik, would you like to come up and discuss uh, 2013 180? Which one? 166. What I just first like to know is this residence, 12 of North Stiles Street, or this this address, is this a residence or a commercial? This this is the Lums building, the, the ambulance squad building. Beg you, I can hear, what the was ambulance that? squad building. Oh, okay. All right, fine. Mm -hmm. Then. Thank you. Uh, motion, please. That was 166. I apologize, I got out of order. So a, a motion for 2013-166. I move resolution 2013-166 and seek a second. Second. Mr. Colbert. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. 20. 13173, uh, Ms. Wilberdink. Diane Wilberdink, East Morris Avenue. We're looking for suggestions to help the budget and cut stuff. Here's something almost $300,000 waterproofing for the City Hall parking garage. To me, that seems like a luxury item rather than something a necessity and I think that should be forgotten about for now and when we get more money consider that because that's a lot of money three hundred thousand dollars and you guys are looking for ways to save money so here's a strong suggestion take that. Take that. Al can you speak about that Mr. Brown through the chair uh, if we can have Al or the engineer speak about the condition of the garage and Mr. McDonald, on behalf of uh, Mr. Brown, would you uh, give us some information on it? Uh, this is not a waterproofing contract. This is, uh, that's the name of the company. Uh, this is a rehabilitation of the entire city hall uh, garage parking area that's been on the books for years to do. This, I believe it's been on the books for the past three years. And we had to have some structural integrity testing done and uh, now we're finally moving forward with the project, but this has been in the capital budget for three years now. Haven't we turned out to be really lucky on this? It was uh, I, I feel that way. I mean, the structural integrity test came back uh, positive, and uh, we can move forward with the project now and get the repairs done. So this is not, I think uh, it's a little misleading because the name of the company is uh, Waterproofing Incorporated, and that's not what they're gonna be doing. Council President. Mr. Brown. I just want to add something too. Um, and I, I guess we get to something we can fix in, a f in the future too. Again, this is a capital improvement project. Again, this isn't coming out of the current fund budget. And like Al said, this has been requested for the last couple of years. Uh, just the structure, you know, damage on, on, on the municipal building, this is something that we're looking to get fixed. Thank you. A uh, motion, please. This is about the difference between the capital budget, it's still coming out of taxpayer money, correct? Doesn't that make the, the taxes go up, whether it's within whatever category? It, it makes a big difference where the money's coming out of, again, because again, the budget is over cap, and we're talking about, and your cap applies to your current fund. It doesn't include your capital budget. And again, the city has been maintaining a constant level. If you look for the last couple of years, when we talk about what we appropriate in a capital budget mm -hmm. and what we do in the projects and everything else like that has been consistent over the last couple of years. But if the, you could make that go down, that would help taxes, correct? How, if you could make that section of the bill, you know, the the, um, the difference, the, the perfect example. You so if this was going to be about three hundred thousand in your current fund budget, that's a couple of tax points versus again you're talking about spreading out three hundred thousand dollars in a matter of like 20 years you're talking about the difference of roughly 
uh, do, 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 less less than thirty thousand dollars a year versus the problem that we're having with this municipal garage. If there's some type of structure damage, and let's just say the building falls apart or pieces fall on either civilians or on top of cars, mm -hmm. how much we're going to wind up paying in insurance? Mm -hmm. And if you look on our budget, we have the insurance policies that we have costing the city a couple million dollars. So again, this is a matter of not just spending money because we want to, but a matter of also preventing um, us paying out large insurance claims. Yeah. Mr. Sheehy. I was going to comment to what Mr. Brown just picked up on. The parking garage is in bad shape. It's a lawsuit waiting to happen. It's a million dollar lawsuit. Somebody gets hurt in that parking garage. It, just walk through there. The cement is falling from everywhere. There's holes in the floor. There's cracks everywhere. It's a lawsuit waiting to happen. We've been working on this for three years, uh, getting prices. Nobody wants to spend that money, but it, but it, ha it has to be done uh, because it, it's a hazard. It's a tripping hazard. It, you know, said, uh, damage to vehicles and uh, you know that da damn personal damage is somebody's going to cost us a million dollars easy so that, that garage has to be repaired what year was it built it's got to be 20 years old like 1977 somewhere around there was it more than that like in the 70s yeah, yeah it was 77 yeah and it hasn't gotten into repairs i mean i can show you pictures me and councilman colesville during what two years ago the hurricane you will see water coming from the third floor down to the second floor, like a waterfall coming down. I mean, this is. So nothing has been repaired on this in, the, in all those years? So this would be the first major repair done? All right, that answers my questions. Thank you very much. Motion, please. Um, I move resolution 2013, 173, and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colbus. Yes. Koziel. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. No, I agree with Diane. I think this should be put off a little since Sheehy. we are in the mind. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. 2013-177, uh, Mr. Costre. George Costre, Ferber Avenue in Linden. Um, as you stated in the prior one, this is the Ambulance Corps building, which the property runs from Donaldson Place to Style Street. Uh, I know that it is a little bit of an industrial area. I know where there's a caterer in there now. I think it might be wiser for the city to sell this piece of property, and you'll get tax rateables in for the property there. Uh, maybe we could have Mr. Stefanowicz look into getting somebody into this property. You could develop the backside and then the hall, you might be able to get a caterer to take that over. There's a vacant firehouse on Wood Avenue and Morris that the county might be able to use that you could rent that to them instead. It's just an option. Uh, it's just, you know, something I was thinking of. I know the financials uh, that the city's in right now. And like I said, it might be a better option for you to sell the property and maybe rent the county the firehouse on Wood Avenue, which is vacant. That's all. Council President. Councilman Brown. Um, we, we, I, I know last year, I, I, Chris, if, if I'm correct, um, the real estate committee did look into the possibility of selling this property. Now, here's one of the issues. You sell the property, that's good. Let's just say if we get roughly three, four hundred thousand, 400000 even 500000 that's a one-shot hit, I mean, one-shot plus to your budget. And one of the reasons why it's beneficial for us to take this building back is that one is that we have an OEM trailer that's right behind it. That OEM trailer does not have a backup generator. It's a trailer. We're paying utility bills and all this other stuff on top of that. One of the things is, is what we're going to be using this building is taking OEM and moving them over to this building. So now the equipment that's usually outside in the weather, and you know there was, again, Councilman Coles with me during these hurricanes. There was water inside these boats. Again, these our equipment now will be protected and put into the um, um, bays. In addition. There was a backup generator there. What we find out in the OEM trailer, there was no backup generator. So that's a plus there. 
And to offset some of those costs, again, the city will be getting reoccurring revenue from renting it out from not just the catering hall, but then also um, Union County uh, will be looking to rent it out and using an ambulance service there, which so happens to be the purpose of that building. So it's, it's more beneficial for the city to get reoccurring revenue um, use out of this building than selling it only get that, getting that one time hit. Uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong though, if you sell the building, will you not get tax rateables coming in for the building plus the property behind if you sold it? The firehouse on Wood Avenue has plenty of room for you to put OEM in the back. There is an emergency generator at that firehouse and you'd still be able to use the two front bays for the county ambulance. So if you really look at it, I think you would get more money because you'll be bringing in tax every year. It's not like you're losing it. It's a one-shot deal that you're selling it. Correct. That's a one-shot boost to you. But every year after that, you'll be getting tax dollars on that property. That's a large piece of property. The property on the back side, like I said, you might be able to develop it, maybe put another building up, more tax dollars into the system. I'm just asking you to maybe look at the whole picture. I understand, you know, during the storm and stuff and where OEM's trailer is. But like I said, that firehouse on Wood Avenue, you can still use the back. There's three bays on the back side. There's two bays on the front side. There's the complete upstairs there also for offices for OEM. I think it might be wiser than maybe table this for now and say, hey, let's look at the picture. Maybe you didn't realize it before. I'm not sure if you did or not. But I think that as a citizen, you might be able to get more bang for your buck by doing it this way. And it's just a suggestion. And you know, I just wanted to put it out there for you. Can I Thank you very much. Motion. For I move resolution 2013-177 and seek a second. Second. Mr. Colvis. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes, and I wanted this mission to George. George, your idea does not go without merit. It's, it has a lot of merit to it. And I think although we have entered into an agreement with the county, uh, if further down the road we see, see it necessary to uh, enter another agreement that's beneficial, that is beneficial to the city, we may do so. But I do think your idea does have merit. Okay, like I said, I just figured more eyes on it. You know, maybe I see something you didn't see. Maybe you see something I didn't know, and that's why I came up to question it. Thank you. And my vote is yes. yes. Cosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. 2013-178, Mrs. Malik? Because there's a, re a resolution on this infrastructure, uh, infrastructure projects, what I'd like to know, is there any liability to the city financially? Mayor? Let, let the city engineer answer that, please. Mr. Verchik. I, I know nothing about this. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. So, so and we're putting a resolution out, and because one can make the assumption that the um, energy prog uh, energy strong is paying the four billion for the projects over the ten years, but why do we have a resolution for it if the city's not going to get hit with something? Our, our public property, Mr. McG Mr. McDonald, be able to answer that. Uh, that's in regards to. Uh, I'll answer it then. That's in regards to the energy uh, rate due to Superstorm Sandy. The PSE&G is petitioning the BPU to put in, I think it's something like three or four billion dollars in energy increases so that they could upgrade their delivery systems. Uh, one of the delivery systems is going to be the substation in Tremley Point that was wiped out by Superstorm Sandy. They're either going to move it or raise it up to elevate it so it doesn't get flooded again uh, when we have a tidal surge. This is throughout the entire state of New Jersey, uh, whether they're going to be improving the high voltage lines, whether they're going to be improving the substations or other improvements, and they're asking for support from us that these BPU assist them in these rate increases, which are not going to be an increase because they're claiming that the rates 
are being lowered and therefore it's going to stay stable rather than have an increase because natural gas prices are going down. And again, this is what they're asking support from so that the BPU will approve their infrastructure improvements, which again are talking about two, three, four billion dollars throughout the state. What is BPU? The uh, Board of Public, Board of Public Utilities. Utilities. Oh, okay. So, you, so we could possibly be seeing an operating rate increase, but not a capital outlay? No, again, what they're claiming is that the natural gas rates have fallen dramatically, and therefore by getting, keeping the rate stable that it is now, uh, it, instead of dropping the rate, because they gotta get PPU approval, instead of dropping the rate, they will keep it stable. It will not increase any taxpayers' rates, but that'll give them the money to make infrastructure improvements so that we don't have the electrical adages that we had during Superstorm Sandy. Okay. Why don't you have a seat in the front? Because uh, you're next again. Motion, please. I move resolution 2013-178 and seek a second. <laughs> Second. Second. Mr. Colbus. Yes. Koziel. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. 2013-180, Ms. Malik. Again, 432 Elmwood Terrace. Is this a, a residence? This is the city's neighborhood preservation program. Uh, why I'm right. asking the question is like, why are we really getting involved in this? You know, and put, we, you know. This is the low and moderate. We, we, this is the money the city got over the years from other towns and other federal programs to help uh, low and moderate income people renovate their homes that are in need of repairs. So we hold, we've lent them money and held the mortgage on it. They're refinancing, so we just subordinate our mortgage. And once again, where did you say the money came from for this? Uh, the money came from federal programs, There's came it, from okay. other towns. When other towns were doing Mount Laurel projects, uh, they didn't want to build. They gave us money to alleviate their housing, money from the county. So mm -hmm. this is uh, in a dedicated fund that's used, revolving fund that's used for this. Okay, thank you. Motion, please. I move resolution 2013-180 and seek a second. Second. Mr. Colvis. Yes. Koziel. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Uh, Pat Hero. Are you moved now? Okay. That's 2013. Uh, 182. Okay. Uh, resolution approving the award of a contract to Verizon uh, Business Network Services for direct dialed toll and local message units for the city of Linden for a 36 month period, not to exceed $60,000 per year, totaling $180,000. Has this been put out to bid and was this the only bidder or how was this awarded? Because $5,000 a month for phone service does seem pretty expensive to me. This is Zach. Our purchasing agent um, had gone to the market and, and this is our telephone service for our centric system that we have throughout the city of Linden. Uh, Verizon again came in at a minimal increase um, to the city of Linden and this is for the time period from 2013 to March of 2016. And this is not subject to bid because it is a utility. Council, Pre oh, Council Why President. Why is it? Councilman Brown. Alexis, correct me if I'm wrong, and, and we ha actually have our purchasing agent, she's just been on top of this and explained everything. But I think also we're almost kind of forced to go with Verizon because of the systems that we have here in Linden and City Hall, the infrastructure is so outdated. I think Verizon is one of the few companies that still offers uh, this particular service that we have. What our purchasing agent also looked at is, well, what would be the cost 
and if we were saving any money, if we upgraded our telephone infrastructure, and the cost, you know, would be like I think north of three hundred, four hundred thousand uh, dollars. If anyone goes downstairs, if they got phone systems or downstairs, it's the old whole plug-in method. I mean, uh, if you can elaborate on that a little bit more or less. Correct. The councilman uh, is correct. We had a meeting with our purchasing agent. She handles the utilities, and she explained the intricacies of our lines of communication. And basically, the centric system is a Verizon system that the city of Linden has had. And it's not just city hall. It's all remote locations throughout the city that have telephone communications. And this is what this contract provides is for our centric system for telephones. So okay. I'll give you a perfect example. We Right now, I guess if the, um, the mayor calls, let's just say someone down at Public Works, the city doesn't get charged. Uh, if we upgrade our systems after spending a couple hundred thousand dollars, into it going forward what would happen is if the mayor calls down to public works the city would be charged that if that makes sense so it's actually more expensive if we want upgrade our system and then two the services would probably cost more as well thank you before i ask for a motion i'd like to ask the public to refrain from eating or drinking in in the chambers please motion please I move resolution 2013-182 and seek a second. Second. Mr. Colbus. Yes. Koziel. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. 2013-184, uh, Mrs. Malik. Can just someone explain what is the sick leave donor system? Mr. Roth? The, the, we have a sick leave donation policy here when someone has an illness um, or some other catastrophe that requires them to utilize sick leave. They run out of their sick leave. Other employees can donate up to five days. There's a review by a committee um, and whatnot. There is a change to the current policy, that's what this is, to make it for a chronic or terminal illness or for FMLA leave, among other things. Okay, so we're fine. tightening it up a little bit. Good, thank you. Motion, please. I move resolution 2013-184 and seek a second. Second. Mr. Colvis? Yes. Cozio? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mrs. Willardink, uh, 2013-185. I'd like a little more explanation on um, issuance of bond anticipation notes. Stacy, Stacy in the room? No, that would be Council Alexis. Council President, I can answer that. Mrs. Zach? Council President, I can answer that. Please. Bond anticipation notes are temporary financing. Each year, the City of Linden looks to do some temporary financing for our um, various capital projects that had been approved but not permanently financed. For example, last year there was certain items in the year before that we had approved through our capital budget. Now we need to have the project started and have funds to start paying for those projects. So the bond anticipation notes is a temporary financing vehicle that the City of Linden utilizes to receive cash for those projects until they're permanently financed and bonded. This, this is a bond anticipation note for the city of Linden. We ask for authorization at this council meeting and we have it in May. Okay, so you could ask for something to get fixed or whatever, but you, we not, might not necessarily have the money? No, what we do is we do bond ordinances where we authorize the project. That mm -hmm. gives the spending authorization to the council. Then we go through bond anticipation notes to fund those projects. That's what this does. This funds those projects. It's not permanently financing them. That's done through a bond issue. This is a bond anticipation note. This is a temporary financing mechanism that's used for a year. And we do this annually. Okay, so is this going through a bank or through the state or? It, there's a whole um, process that they go through for the bond anticipation notes. Last year there was, Jeffries was the instrument, the banking instrument that had awarded it. It goes through a competitive process and whoever the best rate that gives us gets awarded the bond anticipation notes. Okay, so you have to pass this in order to? To issue the note sale. I see, okay. Yes, ma'am. That's all. Motion, please. Ms. Wolverine, you can have this. 
Oh. It's a resolution. Is there like a top limit or something? Do you have some general figure in mind when you do these? Or is we usually something go through and it's usually the prior year's capital projects. So if we keep the capital projects between three and a half and four million dollars, that's what the note usually is for to fund those various projects. I see. So you just do this once a year? Correct. And then as each project comes up, you're figuring out the amount and passing it? Well, again, the, the ordinances are what the governing body institutes, and that gives us the authority to, to operate and to function. This okay. gives us the cash in order to pay for those projects. Like a guesstimate. Yes. Okay. Motion, please. I move resolution 2013-185 and seek a second. Second. Mr. Calvis. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. 2013, 187, 186. Uh, Pat Hero? I will actually batch both of these if that's okay. One is, is 186, the application for participation in the pilot program related to 187? It would, is. Okay. would you come up, please? Stacey Carroll's the uh, tax collector. So the pilot program basically will be for the year 2013, and then we'll decide whether or not we want to continue it. This is a state program. The pilot program is being. Carol, I can you use the microphone for TV for the, the folks. The state has authorized a pilot program with a tax sale to do an online tax sale as opposed to um, like an auction system that's held annually by, my, by myself. And the online tax sales making it a little bit more structured and easier for my office, my staff, and it's much quicker. And it allows anybody in the country or anybody in the world to bid on the tax liens. And this is the company that we, award, we would award the contract to, which is cheaper than what it cost us to hold it last year. Have you been in touch with any other towns that use this? Yes. And has it been successful? Yes, the tax collector for Red Bank was here last night they had done the very first tax sale online the day of Superstorm Standy, and it was 100% successful. So, something that'll help. Well, yes, but for everyone except whose properties has been tax sold, I guess. But maybe we could consider lowering the rate of interest up, as, as I have suggested at previous t meetings. Thank you. Mrs. Malik? Can you just explain a little bit more when you talk about what exactly is this, um, the tax sale? The tax sale or the Jones Act, which number? It's 186. By law, annually, I have to hold a tax sale for anything for the prior calendar year that is delinquent because we have to collect it in full, and that is the last form of enforcement that has to be done by the tax collector. By the end of this year, I must hold a tax sale for anything that's delinquent for the prior calendar year. It's a lien, yes, it's a tax lien. It's like, it, it's, they become a party in interest. And then it's paid through my office and redeemed through my office. Any further questions on this? If not, motion please. I move resolution. Did you wanna say something? 186 or 187. 186, 187. I move resolutions 180, 2013, 186 and 2013, 187 and seek a second. Second. Mr. Colvis. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Uh, 2013, 188. Uh, Mrs. Malik. Resolved. Thank you. Motion, please, for 188. I move resolution 2013-188 and seek a second. Second. Mr. Colbus. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Crosby Hurling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Pat Hero on 2013-191. Okay, I guess uh, I know that we pulled 190, but I'm wondering why we don't have 190 for some of the other departments. Um, 
and why we're only considering for the police. It says this is a mandatory temporary furlough plan to the Civil Service Commission in the interest of the economy. Such plans to be drafted for each state department. But I was reading in the paper that if we do a furlough, the mayor was saying, and I don't know if he was quoted correctly, but that we would have to pay over $1 million into the unemployment fund. Is that correct? So why are we doing this? Or is this considered a voluntary furlough? And quite frankly, who's going to volunteer to give up a day of pay? OK. Um, Mr. Roth, please. We are aware of the fact that if there is a furlough that would necessitate 20% reduction in someone's pay, then we would be liable for un unemployment. We are filing a plan that will get a, not uh, require us to pay unemployment. But either way, no matter what we do, we have to file whether it's a layoff, a voluntary furlough, a mandatory furlough, or demotions, we have to file with civil service a plan so that they can approve it. And that's what this grants us the ability to do, is to uh, file a furlough plan for the non-emergency service employees. OK, thank you. By the way, I think a furlough may be a good idea. Sorry for people. Motion, please, on 2013-191. I make a motion on resolution 2013-191 and seek a second. Second. Mr. Calvis. No. Koziel. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Harling. No. Sadowski. No. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Abstain. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. We we'll move into ordinance on first reading. Council, in order to take into consideration public input in the proposed ordinance, we'll allow three minutes for each individual to speak on the ordinance on first reading. Council will not answer questions. And everybody's reminded the public hearing on these ordinances would be held next month's council meeting. 5722. An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 7 traffic as follows Section 7 33 Handicap Parking Regulations, 7 33.1A Handicap Parking on Street at 18 East Curtis Street. Comments? Motion, please. Mr. President, I ask that Ordinance 5722 uh, be introduced and seek a second. Second. Mr. Colibus? Yes. Cozio? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. 5723. An ordinance creating a residential overnight parking permit for certain areas. Comments? Motion? Yes, Mr. Council President. I ask for a motion to introduce Ordinance 5723 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colibus? Yes. Koziel? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. 5724. An ordinance to amend Chapter 2-69.4 entitled Police Department Record as follows. Add Section 2-69.4 Fees. Comments? Motion, please. Council President, I make a motion for the uh, approval of 57-24 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colibus? Yes. Koziel? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Horling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Uh, 5725. 
an ordinance to amend and supplement chapter two administration and chapter 16 solid waste management of an ordinance entitled an ordinance adopting and enacting the revised general ordinances of the city of Linden 1999 passed November 23rd, 1999, and approved November 24th, 1999, and as amended and supplemented. Comments from the audience? Please come up, Pat, here. This is 5725, correct? Correct. Correct. Well, it's interesting that I'm here tonight and I got a copy of my agenda tonight, and this does not even appear on that. So how can we make comments on an ordinance on first reading that not, that's not even in here? That's my comment, thank you. It's not an informed public, and the government is supposed to keep us informed, thank you. Motion, please. Council President, make a motion for ordinance 57-25 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colibus? Yes. Koziel? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Hurling? No. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? No. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? No. Mr. Moore? Yes. We'll move into comments from members that are public in attendance on city business. Not to exceed five minutes. Uh, Maro Frank. Mr. Frank. Frank Morrow. I think he left the room. You're sitting over there. He left. Okay. All right. Pat Hero. Pat Hero, we chief. Oh, first of all, I want to wish Councilwoman Yamakaitis and anyone else that was involved. Uh, with her in that auto accident, a most speedy recovery. Now, April happens to be a very special month for me because it's nine, I believe it's nine years ago this month that I first made my appearance at city council meeting, so it's my anniversary. Wish to say it was a happy one, but unfortunately, it is not. <laughs> I am glad of some things. I'm glad, for example, that we do have one, one more bite at the apple, so to speak, about trash pickup. Personally, I'm on record as saying I love trash pickups, and it breaks my heart that we are no longer having them, but such is the case. Um, I understand that for budget reasons. Um, now, I've been around long enough to see everybody on the council, with the exception of Councilman Armstead, have changed seats. The mayor used to be the 10th Ward Councilman. They were the only ones that were here when I started. Um, a lot of you department heads have also changed in that time. So I've seen a lot of things around here. Um, I heard tonight about Mayor Gregorio. Well, if Mayor Gregorio was such a great mayor, the city wouldn't have been in the shape it was in. Because you can have bad management when times are good. But when times are bad, that's when you find out how the management was. And believe me, we should have cut back when we had the opportunity, when our expenditures started to increase revenues back in 1989, but we didn't. And the problem, quite frankly, isn't with DPW. So I don't really understand why we're talking about possibly having garbage charges. Remember, the problem is with large amounts of administrators making over $70,000, $80,000, $90,000, $100,000 a year. But you don't seem to need to cut that. Linden may be a family, you say. Well, yes, you're a family. A lot of you have family in government, hired by government, and maybe that's not making their rather nice salaries, and maybe that's why you don't want to cut back, okay? But if you have the family, then us uh, taxpayers are of the unwanted stepchildren. And quite frankly, we can't afford to pay for your families anymore. Because quite frankly, our families are going without food, medical care, and you're acting like pampered poshas, acting like it's horrible. Oh my God, we have to pay into our health insurance? Some of us don't have health insurance, okay? Maybe you could afford to pay 30% of your health care. When I was making $17 an hour, I was paying over like maybe $150, okay? 
had here Back in, in the let me day. ask uh, when the contract was uh, written. Mr. Roth? Do you mind if I keep going and I can finish this up because I'm on a roll. I don't like to get stopped. Just give it five minutes. Okay. And we're talking about a severe budget deficit, okay? But you're acting like there's no problem with all the employees we have. We still have, I understand, more employees per resident. And a lot of them probably could be cut. I'm reading a great book right now by Dr. Henry Cloud. It's called Necessary Endings. And I would recommend it to each and every one of you to read. Because you see, what the chapter I'm working on right now is called Urgency. I don't see urgency here tonight. I don't see you thinking about, this is really desperate. It's $5 million, you're blaming Governor Christie. Oh, we're 2% over the key. Oh, he's not letting us go over the cap. This is horrible. Well, excuse me. Property taxes are through the roof. I wish it wasn't that way in New Jersey. I wish we had higher income tax and lower property taxes because it's killing the people who are on lower incomes. But because a lot of your families are employed by the city government, it doesn't seem to bother you. And I'm just really, really kind of very, very fr uh, frustrated about all of this. You know, I mean, we talk about, you know, Morningstar, St. George Avenue, but you know what? If you had listened to me many years ago, we wouldn't have gotten in this problem. We had a lot of businesses in that area, but no, you had to tear them all down, give it to a private developer, and we've been paying for that ever since. You know, I keep coming back here, and I hope it works out, but, you know. One minute, please. Thank you. Um, I just hope that you start paying attention and start listening and making some necessary endings to some of the ways business has been conducted in Linden. As I said, if you're a family, you care about the other people in your family. You just don't neglect them. And a lot of taxes have been neglected for way too long because your family has benefited way too much. Thank you for your time. Council President. I'd like to respond. Councilman Brown. Ms. Hero, I'm sorry, I have to disagree with what you're saying that there's no sense of urgency. If you go back, let's just say even six months ago, you know, people can remember on a council, me and Councilman Arm said we'd be fighting, me and Councilman Sheehy, me and the mayor. Oh, Ms. Ms. Hero, my, my point being is this, is that this council has not only put our differences aside, but has been working together on fixing this budget. While we may not be talking about this publicly and everything that we're doing, we have been held, holding multiple meetings, um, emergency meetings. We've um, been in contact with each other over the phone day and night. You know, I, I'm calling the treasurer while she's on vacation, and, and she has no problem with that because everyone understands that this is a sense of urgency. The union guys, we, you know, you have council members meeting with the union guys on a Sunday. I you see the bill was it on a Saturday and Sunday where we're meeting with union guys. So there has been a sense of urgency. In addition, we're trying to communicate communicate with the public as much as possible on how severe this is. Now, in regards to blaming on, on Governor Christie and the 2% cap, it's not a matter of blaming him solely on the cap. Uh, it's not a matter of just blaming oh, solely on the cap. No, Ms. Hero, if you read my statement last month, it's a multiple of factors that you have to take into consideration. So when we talk about the, the decrease in revenue, you have to take in consideration that, yes, part of that decrease is coming from the 2% cap that we are held to. In addition, I also listed how we have a decrease in revenue from the red light cameras. Half of that has to go to Union County. Now, as far as addressing the employees and cutting back on, on employees, this is something Councilman Kozil and other members have been addressing, where not only have we shrunk down public works, recreation, I think municipal garage and others, uh, uh, departments, um, they have been doing it in City Hall. The mayor, for example, he has a secretary who works in his office as well as in the treasurer's office. So uh, the council is working extremely hard. Um, and and I'm, it's unfortunate that you don't see that. But I, I, I you know, I, as any council member here, how much time and effort that they're putting into it, and they're putting in a lot of time. I just want to say one comment, and I apologize to Councilman Colobus for this. But if I had a copy of the budget that you guys have, not the one Alexis gives, although it's very fine, but doesn't give everything, believe me, if I had a copy of that budget and I could spend one afternoon with Mr. Roth after I went through that copy of the budget that all you have, 
I think I could suggest a number of cuts. And then why are you employing firefighters and policemen, hiring more policemen, when you know you're gonna be possibly laying them, it just doesn't make sense, okay? So maybe you are being urgent about this, but I don't think maybe you're being urgent enough. Can I'm sorry, but people need to have cuts. Council President. Uh, Councilman Cozio. Ms. Hero, you, you come here month after month and yes. you, you bring up the same issue. We answer you month after month. 30, over 30% 30 less city government now than three years ago. How many times? We keep telling you this. We have tried. You, when you talk about a sense of urgency, you, do you want to see panic up here? Do you, what do you want to see? Councilman Brown, the mayor, everybody on this council have been working very hard to get this budget to where it has to be. Is there blame? Sure, everybody's going to point fingers. They do it online, they do it outside, they do it in the street. We're doing everything we can. What do you, every month you come up here and it's the same story, it's the same song. Now, quite honestly, I've had it. Okay? We keep We've telling, had it too, we keep, telling, we keep telling you we are Councilman. trying to do, what we are trying to do is reduce the size of city government. You, if you want to come to the hearings, come to our hearing, come to any hearing you want and make suggestions. That's what we're asking you to do. But if we tell you month after month that we have reduced the size of city government over 30%, I remember telling you at least three times myself. Right, but it needs to be reduced more, particularly in the regard to those people who are I making over eighty thousand, one hundred thousand, a hundred thousand dollars salaries. I invite you to come to every hearing that we have and please make suggestions. I have come for nine you. years longer you, than you've Hero. been on the council. Thank you, Ms. Hero. Thank council, you very much, Council President. Mr. Brown. Yes. Um, one thing you also pointed out, Ms. Hero, is that. There's only two people here on the council that are still here. As a result, there's council members such as myself that are dealing with contracts that were approved prior to us being here, uh, negotiations that were agreed to, and, and, and um, a whole lot of other things. So some of the council members here are dealing with these issues in the past that are affecting us now in the present. And we're working our hardest to fix this and to prevent it in the future. I give you one perfect example. Almost two years ago, I talked about separating the personnel finance committee, and there's people who came up here and said it was political. And I talked about it two years ago that you need to separate the personnel finance so that on one area, or one group of people focus on the finance, another group fo focuses on the personnel. But it came political, and I said two years ago, we need to start doing this. Last year when I voted no for the budget and the year prior to that, I listed my reasons why. Those issues have not changed as far as the financial condition the city is in. We have a decrease in revenue uh, this year. I project that revenue are not, is not gonna increase next year. This, and I don't know how much more of a sense of urgency you want us to talk <coughs> about publicly, but again, everyone here is working the hardest. Me and Jack talk, I, I, Jack, I mean, we talk maybe three times a week to fill each other in. You know, uh, me and the mayor talk almost every day. And this is, <laughs> you guys laugh, but I remember a time when the two of us would be at each other's throat, but because that we're in such a dire strait here, everyone has put their differences aside, is brainstorming together to get us out of this mess and to put Lyndon in, in a better financial situation next year and the years prior. So that's all I have to say about that. Councilman Armstead. Mrs. Hero, I just want to let you know that um, we do have to do some cleanup in the city of Linden, and um, we're going to have to really sit down as a governing body over the next couple of months and next year and really address the table of organizations in this town. Uh, we are a little top heavy, there's no question about that, and we're going to have to address it the best way we can. Um, at the same time, um, you know, we still need our services, uh, you know, we need our garbage, we need our police, and we need our fire. So we have to do this in a way that, um, that, that is good for the city and, and good for our departments. It's not going to be easy, but I agree, we do have to do something, uh, uh, just a little bit more. And unfortunately, we're in a, in a bad situation now with, with the finances. We're doing everything humanly possible to try to, 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 to close the budget gap this year. Uh, but I can assure you that um, we are, and this city is in store for some changes, some necessary changes. Councilwoman Rashana Cosby Harley. Ms. Hero, I feel your pain, and I just want to say to you that the Negotiations Committee has met twice already this year, and that's going to make a big difference next year. That's a committee that I'm the chairwoman of. And our Personnel Committee 
is actually looking at the same things that you were talking about as far as who's what and you know the job titles. We're looking at all of that. It's just we can't do it right now. We're gonna. It's the process. So you know, just be assured that we're working on it. Personnel is definitely on it, and as well as negotiations. Mr. Sharpie. five minutes last last summer each one of you's had children having their first job in their life at the age of 16 that total amount for those 20 kids was forty thousand dollars now here's a child was getting 16 year old making two thousand dollars it's their first job and I remember in the back you saying, oh, we're taking the 40,000 for kids to take it off. My daughter was proud to earn that $2,000. I remember I had my first job. At, and that was the first thing you all said, take the $40,000 the kids can't come in for the summer. Wow. The other agenda, the new court, we need it. We can share it with Roselle. It'll be on our land. Drug crimes are up. We need to share with Roselle. And the other thing, what happened to the medical waste facility we were supposed to put up? It would be $1.5 million. What happened? I don't hear anything more about the medical waste facility. What happened? Put it in front of your house. We don't want it in the seventh floor. There's no danger in that. There's no danger in that. Yeah, Those boilers could break that down to fine fabric. <laughs> There's other states that are using that same system to break down medical waste. It's safe. What do you know about it? I have a high pressure. Why am I even talking to you? I'm oh, sorry. I'm in a Excuse me, sir. Sorry, Jack. Yeah. And the metal, too. How much metal we have lost over the past three years by scalpers going throughout this city stealing? That's our money. And people from all other towns, scalpers come and take it away money. How much thousands of dollars have we lost? 90,000, I figure, with all the metal we lost. Case off what numbers? Big time. Scalpers go around, blowing up the truck. We never stopped it. It all went out to all other towns, all the people from all, come to Linden, the, the trash day. There goes the money out of Linden. Well, Two minutes. That's, you know, December 31st, all the employees are going to have to start paying now. In the first year of the contract, they're going to have to freeze it. Because you have no money to give them. What are you going to give them? I got nothing. Here you're two point something back in a budget. You can't meet a 2% cap. I make sure this is the only town in the state of New Jersey that can't meet the cap. The Board of Education can make their cap. Why can't here the city make it? Figure it out. You're too top heavy. Too top heavy. I looked at the public works throughout the state for the same town. You know where you are ranked? Where your si high salaries? Number two. Figure. Sorry. That's why I have to talk. Virginia Malik. So one of Pat's comments was a nice segue for my questions that I have about what are we going to be doing to get ourselves out of this financial budget mess. You know, we've all heard that the unions are being asked to give back, and but my question, I'm going to ask a couple of questions, but please refrain from answering them until I ask all my questions. What are, will our elected officials, as that's our mayor and all our council people, what are they doing? Um, with respect to giving back, from what I understand that there's a 4% increase for the city workers for this, for this year, and so I assume that's also for the elected officials. Then in 2009, um, that's when we had a new union contract. The first two years we took zeros, and now we're in our, our last year, and again, I said we're getting a 4%, the city workers are getting a 4% increase. I know, I think I spoke to um, Mr. Roth on this, um, and 
with that 4% increase that the city will be getting, it'll be a couple of million dollars, and that may be a third of our 5.2 million overrun above the 2% cap. So the question I have is, and we're alluding to about the health care, even though that we have to pay for the health care for this last year, but could that be put into the equation as a, as a give back? And so now going back to my original questions, for elected officials and the 4% increase uh, in your salaries, whatever, what's happening? Maybe we can start with the mayor and then the rest of the council people. Mr. Mal, if you remember last year, I guess it was December or January, we brought, I brought up a thing about the council people giving back at least one month's salary. Mm -hmm. We did that. I think we had four people do it. So it wasn't much, but it was one month's salary we gave up. All right, can we just maybe start with the mayor? The mayor was going to say something. I gave up my salary for this year. My raise, share. my raise, excuse Your raise. me. Okay. And what's happening on council, the council? I think it raises, actually. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What? Well, I, so well, you said the council's not getting a raise? No. Th this is, we don't, we get, don't get raises. raises. Well, <laughs> here's what typically happens. If, um, if we furlough the city employees and they, and they have to take 10 furlough days, we usually do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the equivalent of, of our pay, uh, we take 10 days uh, worth of our pay and we, we, we suffer the same pain that they do. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's been, a, that's been the policy for as, for as long as I can remember. Ms. Mm -hmm. Mallett, they have not, the council hasn't gotten a raise since 07. Beg your pardon? The council has okay. not gotten a raise since 07. Okay. Um, Mr. Sadowski, what did you just say like, last year? It was a I, I month. I can't think of exactly. It was uh, 2012, mm -hmm. December, November, whatever it was. I proposed something uh, to give back one month's salary. Okay. And we had about four council people mm -hmm. do it. I mean, I, okay. I don't remember who. I know I did it. All right. And, so, of course, we still don't have uh, the insurance and so mm -hmm. on. So it wasn't much, but mm -hmm. the same thing. Uh, I'm not working. Okay. I have a you know wife at home too. Right. So it was something. It was right. uh, to be sure. It's appreciated. Okay. Tenth Ward Councilman uh, uh, Kaczynski. Mrs. Malik, I think I might have told you before. I'm not sure, but I, I reinvest my entire salary through donations and different things for the board. We have a line item that's specifically for the Tenth Ward, so I don't profit from my salary. I have it directly deposited into a separate account, which I don't use. Mm -hmm. So um, I re reinvest it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Council President. Uh, Peter Brown. Yeah. Um, since I first got in, uh, I remember the council talking about city workers taking a 10% cut. So since I first got in, every year I've been taking a 10% cut. Um, again, it's not much, but yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I don't receive the full salary mm -hmm. that um, council members don't take any health benefits. Also looked into not taking the pension. So, oh, about the health benefits. So I don't take it. But none of the council members take the health benefits. That's up. Are you I speaking generally? It. You I don't. Okay. I don't take All right. It. Um, I looked into not taking pension, and mm -hmm. Alexis can look into this. Um, I wanted to forfeit my pension, but unfortunately, the way the state of New Jersey is, if you make over a certain amount part time, I think it's over five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, you're forced to be in a pension system. I tried mm -hmm. for that for mm -hmm. that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then what about with the city works in the last year? So they still have to have all of their health care taken care of, but is there any way that things can be changed knowing that there's give backs for this about last year? We, that was one of the things that we spoke to the unions about, and that was one of the concessions we could not get. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Costry. Five minutes, sir. George Costray, Ferber Avenue. I'm going to keep this short because we're running late here. I was here last month. I spoke about the public safety issues, which were on the ordinances tonight. I see that you tabled those ordinances. Uh, I know that I heard from the mayor, from the union presidents, and uh, from the personnel that the uh, unions were working to give back. The fire department was the first one to step up. Uh, my question is this. Uh, I know you voted on those two ordinances last month, and it was a yes vote. 
Now, you tabled the ordinance. Does that mean you'll vote on these ordinances next month? I believe in <clears throat> May. They, they, are, they are carried to the May agenda right now, and depending on what council's uh, de determination is in May, they may either go forward or may get carried again. Okay, my question is this. You'll be able to carry this ordinance for the rest of the year? An ordinance can be carried for the year up until the change in council on December 31st. Okay, then I'd like to make a suggestion to council. This is just a suggestion. I know you are going to do what you want to do, but seeing that the unions are giving these concessions back to work with you, I think it might be a show of good faith that you vote this ordinance down so that it's not held over their heads every month as a bargaining chip because we know that sometimes things go bad and you go, oh, you know what, we're going to forget about what you guys did and we're going to go through with this. So I think as a sign of good faith that the concessions that you got back from them to help you, and it must have been a pretty good concession. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether we're going to be told what it is. But uh, I think as a show of good faith to the unions that, you know, they showed you good faith. They sat down with you within a month. You guys come up with some pretty good concessions. Evidently, you're making headway, and I give you a lot of credit. It's very hard when you're used to having so much to use, and now you run into cost overruns and everything else. So I give you a lot of credit on both sides, all the council people, uh, the city fathers, uh, the fire department, the fire unions, the other unions that are working towards you and hopefully will become out of this hole and next year we don't have to worry about this. And that's my suggestion. Have a good night, Ms. Yamakaitis. I hope you feel better and have a speedy recovery. Thank you. Tiffy, Macy, Massey. Excuse me if I didn't know how the protocol was that you had to sign up. You pull the mic. Um, I just have a couple of questions because I'm not used to being here and knowing how you guys work. Speaking to the mic. Speak to the microphone. The red light is on. Yes, yes you speak to okay. the mic. Too. Um, I just have a few questions. After listening to a couple of people talk, um, there was a reference of the budget, and then there were statements that there were two different budgets. Um, Ms. Zach had one, and then there was a different one online. How do we get the actual budget so that we can review it? No, it's the same budget. What well, I, I well, that's I don't know why said. there's two different. Yeah. No, there's the budget that we introduced today. That mm -hmm. same budget is going to copies are, are going to be in the clerk's office tomorrow, or you can get it online, or it can be emailed to you. It's only one budget that's introduced. Maybe the second budget, <clears> if <throat> if anyone's talking about, is the process is that a budget gets introduced like it, like we did today, and then the next uh, next time we approve a budget, which that may be different from what we introduce. Okay, um, another thing. I know you, you know why we're here, because we heard about the, the issues with the trash, and I guess our main concern was that we weren't informed ahead of time. I mean, you guys can send stuff in the mail about our taxes and about everything else. I think that should have been sent in the mail, not left to us to look on a website, because who? We have children, we have families, we have jobs, we have lives. We're not looking on your website every day. And why, after all these years, would we even think that that would be in question? There's no way that we would have known that. So I think that's why a lot of people are up in arms, because we just weren't informed, and we feel as though you just felt like, oh, we're just going to slide this in there, and they're not going to know. Well, how is that when, you know, we've been, it used to be once every month, then it was once every other month, now it's only three or four times a year. and. It's necessary. It's absolutely necessary. So that's the biggest problem that we have. And now, the one that we had in January, I believe in Seventh Ward, um, after all the storms and all that, people weren't thinking about going to put out trash. We were trying to get our lives back together. Um, Seventh Ward on 15th Street, we had a tree down in the middle of the street, across the street, so cars couldn't get by for three weeks lines down we had children playing it was ridiculous so it's like nobody was thinking about trash and then to say you're not going to give us another one so now we're racing around and it was actually today what well, is going to be tomorrow but again we're getting word of mouth nothing was necessarily you know sent to us that we knew and i couldn't get in contact with anybody sanitation and nobody was answering phones so it just was like we felt like we were being um not heard and not cared about. Um, another question I have as far as um, cutting budgets, 
Again, not really sure about all of that. We'll have to look into it. But there's things that I see that goes on um, that I question other people, like my mother thinking she may know. Um, there's issues like, say, if you have a little traffic accident, because there was a little traffic accident up at school um, five on, um, what is that, Bower Street and Middlesex Street. And with that one little fender bender, I don't think anybody got hurt. There was an ambulance. There was that other type of ambulance truck. There was cops. There was fire trucks. Why is all that necessary? It's like that's where our money is going. Every time there's an issue, you got this big old fire truck. They don't need their ladder to get them out the house or anything like that. Why is the fire truck coming there? Fire Can anybody answer first that? Responders, right. Tiffany. They, if the ambulance is not there, I mean, correct me, Chief, if you want to take it. But they're first responders, so quite often they'll come first to the scene because they, you know, they are fire chief. trucks. Yeah, the chief will elaborate. I think, right? Chief Russo. I saw a young woman getting put into an ambulance down the street on 15th Street. Getting, she was strapped in a little thing, getting put into the ambulance. The fire truck just sitting there. It's like, to me, it's a waste of our tax dollars. Not to say that you're not necessary, but in these situations, you didn't seem to be necessary. Well, what we have is a policy. It's called the first responder policy. So anytime that there is a call that comes into central dispatch, that requires an ALS response, a paramedic response, mm -hmm. a fire engine is also dispatched to get there first. Because there's a fire engine in each of the districts. There's only one ambulance that covers the whole city. So we can get help to those people that need it, sometimes five minutes before an ambulance can get there. So those, you may see them when they're all there, but I don't know how long that fire engine and those guys who are trained as EMTs were there assisting that person before the ambulance came. Well, that's that's why we do it. It's to it's to help you, or no, to help totally the people that need that help. Part, but it's every time. So it's you can't say that time. they should be the first responders every time. It, we were at a it's only for, football game, and a kid hurt his foot on the football field. Here comes the fire truck. Really? A kid hurt his foot on a football field. Why is the fire truck there? To provide first aid to that, to that kid that but broke his foot. But the ambulance was there. This is what it, I'm confused about. It was there? Yes. In every instance, the, the ambulance was there that I'm speaking of, or I wouldn't question it. They work together, and, and it's, that's the, the policy that we have on it. It's for, it, and you don't we, we don't receive the calls. Things. The calls come to, to central dispatch. If they dispatch it out as an ALS call, then a fire truck is, dis, is going. So no one thinks that that's an unnecessary way well, to spend our money on every well, instance. Well, There should be some type of way to figure that out rather than having all of those people there at one time the call, for a tiny incident. Now, if it was a huge incident. The way the call is received dictates the response that comes to it. So if you call up and say that you're having difficulty breathing, do you think that we should send the, the fastest response to you? I would think you would send the fastest, but I didn't. Well, well that's the way it works then. Okay, so well then, if they're there, then why would anybody else? I mean, it's just confusing to me. I hear what you're saying. There's sometimes just, where, where because they're there, they, we don't have to send the ambulance because they treat them there. Right. So then that, 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 that ne, ne, takes care of the ambulance response. They don't have to come. But the immediate call is dealt with. As they get there, they determine who, what, who is needed and who isn't. And, and once they figure out who isn't needed, they turn them away. I haven't seen them leave. I haven't seen them leave. I see them sit there. So not to say that we're not you know, appreciative of them coming, it just seems to me someone that's probably not knowledgeable, I'm a taxpayer and I see what's going on and this is the form of the act, so this is what I did. This is a policy that is used throughout the country. Tiffany, 30 seconds. I'm done. Thank you. Uh, Jacqueline Williams, please.
Good evening, everyone. Council President, Mayor, members of the City Council. Uh, I asked to come up here because I wanted to ask a question uh, or get some type of clarification off of what uh, Councilman Sadowski had brought up about the summer jobs. Am I hearing that the city is not going to have summer jobs, period? That is the case? According to what we discussed, that there, <clears throat> there will be no summer jobs for, for the children. Okay. That's, uh, there was two, two uh, I can't think of the name, but two different you know, sets of jobs, and it was discussed that it would be terminated. Okay. Um, as you know, I'm always in favor of summer jobs for the kids. I think it's a disaster waiting to happen if you don't give these kids something to do during the summer. Um, I like to ask how much out of the city budget does it really cost to give these kids summer employment? <coughs> Mr. Brown? Yeah, I, I think last year we spent about 70000 um, This year, 70000 was appropriate again. But it's not a matter of how much it costs because uh, we get grant money from clean community. Yeah. It's a matter of, if, you, if you see here, we're talking about furloughing people in public works, mm -hmm. um, pe um, let's just say public works and recreation, guys that are cleaning the streets and everything else, getting paid, I think, 10 11 $12, $14 an hour. These guys, I, I don't see how we can hire kids when we're talking about furloughing adults who have mortgages to pay and other things of that. And so the matter of, it's a matter of, is there a way for us to shift that money, grant money that we have, to supplement people who we're talking about furloughing, who again, have mortgages to pay and other things, and guys who are getting paid 10, 11, 12, you know, dollars an hour. So it's a matter of, again, how do we justify hiring children that we're talking about furloughing adults? Okay, let me just back up. You mentioned grant money. The grant money that you get, if I'm not mistaken, when you put in a proposal for money, for certain things or certain programs, the grant money that you receive, isn't that specifically designated towards summer job programs? No. When you put, when you write your proposal for that money, are you not putting in there that it's going to be used for summer jobs? No. How do you We're talking, word talking that? About, no, this is a clean community money that would, George, how long have we been getting this grant money for? Clean community? Uh, probably 20 years. So this is a regular grant money, clean community money that we've always had. It's been the city's policy mm -hmm. to use it towards um, hiring children. Um, okay, I, I just want to say that I, I disagree with you doing it that way. And what I do believe you can look into is possibly doing a partnership with the business community maybe instead of paying a kid $8 an hour, you can say, okay, the city will give you $4 an hour, and being that it's gonna benefit your business here, you put up the other $4 an hour, and if I'm not mistaken, there's a program that the state actually has that um, does just that and helps cities and municipalities and organizations do just that. I sit on the board for the Salvation Army in Plainfield, and one of our board members brought that up in our last meeting, how the state has this uh, program already set up to where you can um, develop a partnership with the business community and there's like a pool that they pull from to pay for so things like what I'm suggesting here today. I think it's a grave mistake for this city to cut out summer jobs. I can't stress that enough. Ms. Williams, and I think that you should really reconsider it. Um, I don't think it's fair. I mean, understand that furloughs is going to be necessary. I understand that, okay? Um, the taxpayers, myself, a lot of other people have come up here over the years and pretty much threw up all the red flags trying to let you guys know if you do certain things, you're going to have certain effects, okay? No one really paid serious attention to things like what Ms. Hero is saying. And speaking of Ms. Hero, I just have to pause for a minute because, Mr. Cozy, I have great respect for you, but I do think that you owe Ms. Hero an apology. I really do. Um, uh, 20 minutes, but 20 seconds. Thank you. I j okay, I'm just gonna wrap it up and say I think you, you guys should really reconsider it, maybe look into the state program and see how it worked, maybe develop a partnership with the business community, because you can't let these kids just go over to something. You really can't. Thank you. Council President. Mr. Brown. Yeah. 
and Ms. Williams, Thompson. and here's the thing, and I agree, uh, but I've reached out to private industry, and I've said this before, I'm not sure even publicly, like Six Flags has a great program where they need children. And I know some, there's a program where they do busing. At this point, they need people so much that they're hiring people over in Europe and in South America to fill their ranks. And that wouldn't cost the city anything if we develop some type of partnership. And I have made calls down there. But in regards to the city paying for children to be employed, if we had the money, we could. But again, we had to stop trash pickup because we didn't have any money. We were talking about laying off police and fire because we didn't have, well, we still don't, because we don't have the money. We're talking about furloughing people who were putting money back into our Linden economy mm -hmm. and who were paying mortgages and utility bills because we don't have the money. If we don't have the money for, those, for, 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 for that and for other services, where are we gonna get the money to well, pay for, for kids? And, and again, I'm all for if private industry mm -hmm. helps, and, and if they offer internships and pay for those, and if you want to talk with, with one of us on developing that, yes, but I don't see, and until you see the budget document, if you want to look at it, where are we going to get money to pay for kids if we don't have enough money to pay our workers now? I understand, and, and I respect what you're saying, but let me just say this to you. I think one of the mistakes that often take place is that when we do cuts, we tend to cut the people at the bottom of the totem pole. And had you left those people there and cut from the top down, we may have a different story. And then uh, the other thing is we're talking about, what I'm talking about is use how to best utilize grant money. I think it, you should not be touching the grant money and taking that money away from the kids to give it to other employees who are at the bottom of the totem pole who you should not have touched in any way. You should Mr. cut from the top down. Councilman Armstead. I, I just want to go on, on record as saying um, I, I am very much against uh, doing away with the elimination of summer jobs. I'm very much against it. I think that we could do more uh, to preserve our future by prov providing opportunities for young people. I, I think it's a really a sad day in government when we cannot afford to take care of children. I mean, I thought that was our responsibility in government to try to help those who don't have and I believe that children should be given an opportunity to work summer jobs. Thank you. Uh, but again, you know, this is, a, this is a governing body and we govern by consensus, we govern by majority vote. And um, regardless of if, if I'm in favor, if uh, other council members are not in favor of it, then we don't have the summer program. And I've always been in favor of summer jobs. I mean, that was my claim to fame back in the day when mm -hmm. I, I would go to every agency I possibly could. I mean, it was one summer I could recall, well, I got over 40 children jobs. I mean, I, was, I had a big list and, um, over 40 children have gotten jobs, be it through the Board of Education, whether it was the city, in the city of Linden, mm -hmm. whether it was the county, whether it was private industry, whether it was New Jersey Turnpike. But one summer, we got 40 kids' jobs. And I mean, I felt very good about that because I felt like I was, I was doing what I thought my responsibility was to my community mm -hmm. to make sure that young people are employed. But you know what? We're in some very difficult financial times right now. And let's hope that. Um, that one day when we come up out of this mess that we can continue to, to, to provide our children with that kind of opportunity. And that's really what I look forward to, the day when we come uh, together and we can say, hey, we have the money to hire these kids. Thank you for that input there, Councilman Armstead. The following council meetings will be as follows. Council conference meeting prior to the Scout in Government Council meeting Tuesday, April 23rd, 2013 at 6.30 p.m. in the Council Conference Room, City Hall. 301 Northwood Avenue, Scout Government Council meeting Tuesday, April 23rd, 2013 at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers, City Hall, 301 Northwood Avenue. Council Conference meeting Monday, May 20th, 2013 at 6 p.m. in Council Conference Room, City Hall, 301 Wood Avenue. Council Conference meeting prior to Council meeting. Jim, I can't hear you. Folks, we still are, we're still live here. Tuesday, May 21st, 2013, at 6 p.m. in the Council Conference Room, City Hall, 301. Ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Yeah, he's a yes to call of us. Yes. Yes. Brown. Arnstead. Yes. Busby Harlan. Yes. Busby Harlan.
Yes. Sadowski. Sadowski. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Medina. Yes. Mr. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Thank you all.